and we are rolling. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Creative Businessman. Today, we have comedian David Decaro on with us. Hey. What's up, man? What's up? How you guys doing? Thanks Good. for having me, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah Our pleasure. Definitely. Yeah, sure. So just uh, tell everyone a little about you, about yourself and what you do, and we'll go from there. Um, yeah, I'm uh, a little about myself. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a comedian. I do stand-up comedy. Uh I mean, that's pretty much it. That's, I've dedicated yeah. my life. That's all. I don't have any shred of personality. It's all, you know, <laughs> it's all, I, I do comedy and I know like random things, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. I'm an expert on um, uh, 90s and early 2000s cartoons. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get into a heated argument about Code Lyoko, I'm your guy, okay? <laughs> so uh, how long have you been doing stand-up? Um, I've been doing it like four years now. Oh, nice! Yeah. I thought it'd be longer than that, actually. Oh, uh, yeah. It feels it works good. It feels yeah. it feels like uh, um, it feels longer, <laughs> to tell you the truth. So I know that before COVID, you were, it was really taking off for you. Uh, what's it been like since since COVID? I mean, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it was like I was like uh, I was like crawling up the the mountain or whatever. I was like trekking up, and then like I just slid. <laughs> I feel like I slid. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, you know, I do what I can. You know, I can, I'm not getting up nearly as much uh, yeah. as I was. You know, uh, but I still get up. You know, here and there, but definitely not like it was right, yeah. pre-COVID. But I think um, I actually think this might be kind of good for stand-up comedy because I think because um, I think we were like living in a. This is my theory. This is like my uh, like half-baked theory. Okay, you know. My half, my my like conspiracy theorist, <laughs> amateur comic theory. Because comedy, we were in a boom, right? We had like all like there were specials everywhere. Like yeah. Netflix gave a special to literally everyone on the planet. Yeah. Everybody got a special. <laughs> Everyone's yeah. got one. True. And do you have a special? <laughs> You're next. Not, we don't you talk were, about that. Were, <laughs> he was about to get one. Yeah, right I was there. about to. We were negotiating the contract. <laughs> I don't have a special, and I'm not special. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was about to come. You were next in line. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It was really bad then. But um, <laughs> no, they but they were giving them out. They were just like giving. It was so much comedy and stuff yeah. like that, and um, and I think now uh, with like this whole new way of like doing things or whatever because of this, because this is really I think like uh, really making us reconsider, rethink about how we do things, especially live entertainment and stuff like that. So I think I don't think stand up's like dead necessarily, but I think stand up uh, is probably going to go. Uh, back underground a little bit, I guess, you know, because I feel like comedy is very mainstream now. Everybody talks about like comedy. It's all comedy. I think uh, comedy is kind of going to go maybe a little punk again, you know, a little bit like uh, like, you know, basement seller stuff. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? Uh, back. I think it's going to go well, like you can really say really anything you want, because, you know, right now it's like a very, you know, I can't say this on stage, you know, PC police stuff or whatever. Yeah. But I think uh, the focus is going to, like, lay off of it enough, and I think comics are really going to, like, start to toe the line again and start, you well, know. That's good. That's a good yeah. thing. So they it should, should get more that. raw. Then. Yeah, exa- yeah. 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 <clears throat> you know, I think, I, think um, I do agree with you that at first I think it'll be that way, um, because you're not going to have the big crowds, because there's so many people that will be nervous about being a part of a big crowd for a few months. Um, and plus, a lot of comedy clubs have gone out of business. So I think you're going to yeah. see a lot of smaller places open up. Um, but I also believe that there's a vacuum for, for live entertainment, too. And I think mm. that once, you know, once, there's a, a, you know, once the vaccine is dispersed well through, through society and... Oh, you think it'll come back, like, I think it's going to be a wave, man. I think it's going to be just overwhelming. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity for people that are ready because, yeah, I think that people are ready to get out and do stuff, and and as soon as they feel safe, they're going to come in droves. Yeah. What made made you uh, start doing stand-up? What made you, like... Mental illness. (laughs) Okay. That's a great reason. That's a good reason. Uh, No, um, you know, I'm already an actor. I do a lot of acting and writing, and... uh, and I just, I, I really started doing the open mics to improve my comedic writing. Mm-hmm. And I uh, really enjoyed it. And I, I'd done a couple of mics before, you know, uh, back when I was in acting school. And, and I enjoyed it then, but I didn't want to commit to it. It's just, it's very time consuming. It is, yeah. And, uh, but then I, I came out to the Idiot Box and really did, 
liked the vibe. Everybody was cool, and it was it was a big there was a big comedy scene here too that I didn't realize. Um, yeah, went, yeah. No one really suspects like Greensboro to have no. like the scene it uh, the yeah. scene it does. When I went, the first mic I went to, there were over thirty comics there, and I was like, wow, this is pretty serious. And um, and I did terrible, but it was you know still it was a good exp- it, it was cool to see everybody else go up and uh, and I, I got I think I remember I got like a laugh or two maybe, but um, I just kept coming back and and I've kept getting better and. You know, yeah. Watching you guys and you and got absorbed into the cult. Yeah, yeah. Getting advice. He's drinking comics. a Kool Aid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's fun. No, it really is. <laughs> no, you just like you put on like some white robes and like yeah, yeah. you know you drink some Kool Aid. That's hail, hail Baphomet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, hail that's Carlin. Cool. <laughs> yeah, the, the blood sacrifices and stuff are a little disturbing, but yeah. Other than that, it's it's cool. You know, it's worth it. Yeah. So uh, so. Y- so you've always like been in like showbiz and like or you know interested in like I've always been interested in I've always been um an artistic person you know I've always been a cre- creative but um I mean earlier in life when I was young growing up I was always in art you know painting drawing uh, any kind of art I always I was always interested in performance arts too I just you know we grew up in the same town it was a small town and that was Oh you guys are like uh, childhood friends? Uh not really Young, I'd say like young uh, adult friends. Young adult friends. Yeah. So how yeah. how young adults? I was twenty. Like contemporary. I think I was twenty or twenty. Twenty. Well, I met you when you were like nineteen. Yeah, I'm nineteen maybe. Yeah. Okay. But, but we became friends when you were about twenty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably met. Yeah, that's probably right. So how did you guys yeah. meet? Uh, it was really sweet, man. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. Um, and you know, I don't remember which one of us. Wiped off our knees first, but I'm <laughs> 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 just, just fucking with you. But uh, I don't, no, uh, I don't remember this. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, uh, we had some mutual friends that yeah. that uh, you know uh, he was working out with one or two of them, both of them. Yeah, a couple of your friends, a couple of the guys, and then yeah. you know our paths had kind of we were both going down a similar path, but just not together, yeah. right? Mm. And, and it was so, a small town, so there, there weren't many paths. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I think actually, if we were going to be technical, that's when we started becoming a friend. When we originally met, was you showed me a property? Yeah, I think I, was I, I think I, management. Yeah. yeah, you were. He was. Um, I think he was the largest commercial property manager for the company that he was with, but uh, the biggest book. But either way, he showed. I think myself and at the time, I can't remember if we were married or not. My wife and or girlfriend, um, a property that we were looking at interest in renting. That was the very first time, and then um, you know we just grew over that. But we had similar interest and. We always talk business, so it would be funny. Yep. We'd be working out. He was working out. I was in there uh, going through the motions most of the time. <laughs> you were in pretty good shape back then. Yeah, I was. I was. I was yeah. in much better shape. But, um, but uh, you know, just natural evolution. You know, like-minded people. Yeah, come together. You yeah. come together, and yeah. you know, we both were. At least we both thought we were intelligent, and we we both were uh, were readers, and we were autodidacts like we were just constantly trying to educate ourselves and we were you know it was just became a little oh, too cocky yeah yeah in the beginning yeah yeah early <laughs> on some of that went away as you age which is yeah. good yeah. but yeah i don't know it just it just blossomed over time so yeah actually one of the biggest mistakes that uh, i ever made was not going into business with you, business with you back then i mean i appreciate that part, I, yeah. yeah i appreciate that I, yeah. uh i wish i tried to go we we, we did we, we we almost joined forces uh, 16, 17 years ago, yep. 18 years ago at that point. But uh, um, it took a little bit to work our way back. But Just we got timing. There. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's our romance story. Yeah, it's very it, sweet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I figured so, man. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but so, so anyway, uh, I was always into art and creativity. Um, it's always an important part of my life. But, but I was also very analytical. And, and so business kind of came easy to me. And... You know, and I started working early. I was poor as a kid, so I had to work to buy clothes and food and stuff like that. So um, I had a good work ethic at a young age. And uh, after school, I eventually started my first business at 22. Similar to him, he started his first what business. Was, what was like, your first business? It was a flooring business. It was a what? Flooring business. Oh, okay. Like okay tile okay, floor. Okay. Yeah, tile flooring. Um, and then... Uh, by 27, I was fully self-employed and um, became a serial entrepreneur. But I spent most of those young years of my life just focused on business. And I, I would do some creative things. You know, I have, a, I have a degree in advertising and graphic design, so I did a lot of 
you know, artwork and stuff with that. I did some work with that. And I've always used that in, in my own business or now I do a lot of consulting. Is that, is that you? No. Uh, actually, well, artist, he, did, he did the... Uh, I did the logo at the bottom. The yeah. okay, okay. Movement, but the, the art is actually a guy out of L.A. He's a really good artist in L.A. to that. Shouts out. Yeah. Uh, but... Um, and that uh, microphone, I know it looks like it's this microphone, but that's really not what it is. <laughs> yeah. Kind of looks like a flashlight. A it does. So, so yeah. shout out to Adam Wayne. He's the Adam. artist that did the drawing. Yeah, but if you look, he did an awesome job. That's this mic. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, it actually yeah. It works out well. Yeah. He's a good artist. Yeah. yeah. And wow. what's funny is, is when we started, I didn't look like that. But I think the more this podcast goes on, I'm starting to look more and more like that. Well, we, we, <laughs> made, we, made, we had him drawn. We had him illustrated to the look like his goal. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Oh, that's, He's close. that's, no, yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. I'm going to aspire to look like <laughs> <laughs> the handsome drawing. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So we're working towards it. You know, I may need to. Uh, so he's looking more like his drawing. I'm looking yeah, less like mine. He kind of looked like a, a Haynes model, you know, on, on the left side. <laughs> oh, you yeah. Hands in the pocket. Oh, 100%. The, the sex pose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you caught that. I, I've been thinking that the whole time. I'm like, you know, I got, I got the model next to me. <laughs> it's definitely very model-esque. Yeah, those are some uh, Levi's. I feel Levi like that picture is a cross. What's the uh, vampire one where the, the chick was the battle between the vampire and she was loved the vampire and the werewolf? And oh, res- no, oh, that's uh, Twilight. Twilight. No. Oh, oh, is it Twilight? Under- Underworld. 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 He's got like an Underworld oh, okay. kind of vibe going on. The, the main and like Underworld 2 or something like the guy with the long hair where he kind of switches from being the villain to... Kind of telling his backstory, you know, talking about he's got the long hair. Oh yeah, Lucian. Or <laughs> yeah, you've got you've got that kind of vibe going on with the hair there, and that mi- mixed with like an Abercrombie model. And <laughs> 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 I don't know, but yeah, uh, too old for Abercrombie modeling. That's like kid born. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph Lauren. Uh, it, yeah. uh, um, so, uh, but yeah, as I, you know, in in my thirties, I. Uh, had a bunch of business losses, you know, really ate shit for a few years and decided to f- focus some energy back into the arts, you know, to the creative side. That's what I got back in there. Got into acting and writing and you know, creative writing. Um, done a lot of business writing, but, um, and I love it, man. I really enjoy it. It's, it's, uh, to me, it's an equal part of, of who I am now. So I've still got the business side, but I've also got the creative side. Yeah, no, that's a good, it's good yeah. to, because I see, like, especially, like, in comedy and stuff like that, like, so, and, you know, I'm kind of one of those guys, too, where I could learn to be better in the business, but, like, so many, like, artsy guys, they just, wor- or, you know, people, yeah. uh, just worry about the art or whatever, but they don't try to learn about the business side, yeah. and they end up getting fucked, uh, you know, by people just, like, taking advantage mm-hmm. of them, not giving them, yeah. you know, money and stuff like that. I think, it, it, yeah, you should, you should... <coughs> Learn. It's probably yeah. It's good to know like both sides. Of it. Yeah, a it lot is. of a lot of artists are really right brained and they're yeah. they're a little eccentric mm, and left brain right and more brain, abstract yeah. in their thinking. So it's it, you know it's hard for them to be structured. And and I'll tell you, I think that that's true. Um, but we've even got people that are business people that that have been doing business for a long time. That even and I mean I have stuff happen that it gets slid past me. Oh yeah. But you're talking about people getting taken advantage of sometimes. It's not intentional. We have a deal that <clears throat> has come up here recently, and it's a it's, this is not the number, but let's say it's a five million dollar deal. It's a it's a substantial deal, so you got to really pay attention, right? You don't want to make a big mistake like that. Um, and when when you go step by step by step and go through all the motions of the business, you know what is a business? How's it going to generate revenue? How's it going to pay to operate? What's the break even? You start to go through all these little steps, you start seeing that it's not very well laid out, right? And so on our side the money we save is just as valuable as the money we can make. So if we can prevent making a bad decision, if we can prevent from going down a $5 million uh, loss, a potential loss or just a money pit, that's just as good as making $5 million on, in some days, right? Because you'd rather – the first rule is don't lose money. Yeah. yeah. So even for us, like education, and it's something you just got to stay on top of it because, you know, in the business world, things are ever-evolving, and you just got to be diligent. So I could see, you know, somebody may not even intentionally be trying to take care of a comedian or uh, take advantage of a comedian or an actor or a producer. Yeah. But if you start to look at the way the deal is structured, you got to be able to pick up on and go, wait a second, I'm getting the shit into the stick, right? Like, if I'm going to do all this, I need to know if it's an equitable exchange, right? Yeah. It's got to yeah. be mutually beneficial, and, you know, that's what's up for debate. So I think that everybody should focus on some level of the business, and some level of 
how we make sure this is equitable on both sides. And if you can't do that, you need to find somebody that can advise you, pay them a little something, whatever, to help negotiate the best deal you can for yourself. I think it's very important. Yeah. No, true. I was just talking to uh, Jesse about, um, uh, you guys hear about this, the the Warner Brothers HBO Max uh, thing that's happening. They're like releasing all their movies. I did, I heard something about this. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So Warner Brothers releasing like all 16 of their movies or whatever for 2021, like on, it's going to be like a hybrid release. Like they're going to be in theaters, but it's also going to be like you can stream it um, on HBO. Probably going to charge you for them, or I no, I think it's if you just have. Nice, um, I've got HBO Max. So that's yeah, cool. I think if you just have yeah. HBO Max, you should be able to stream it. But uh, a lot of directors, actors, and just like various people who've worked on these movies are uh, very upset because they're about to miss out uh, on like the box all, office, the, box office, yeah. uh, the back end deal, and stuff like that, and. Uh, and th- they had like a contract or whatever going on. Like there was like a deadline or something they had to sign um, to like negotiate the terms or whatever. But Warner Brothers like re- they released a statement like, "Hey, we're doing this like 90 minutes before the deadline or whatever." So no one really had like time to even like you know. Yeah. So just like because they're trying to like keep it hush, they don't want it the blowback or whatever. Um, so yeah, so like all these directors like uh, like Dune, you know, mm-hmm. uh, like Dune. Uh, I think they're making like a Tom and Jerry movie. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> worked on that. Yeah. To, uh, I have a four year old, so that's. Yeah. yeah. Did we need a Tom and Jerry movie though? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel I, like the old ones are like. I was born in 1980, so we definitely need a Tom and Jerry movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I love Tom and Jerry. I grew up with Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry is like timeless. I think like no matter what generation, like a, kids can sit down and watch it. But I think like I'm just picturing like a live action. It's gonna. I feel like it's a little <laughs> creepy if I see like a realistic cat's eyes. <laughs> oh, is, like, it, is it live? <laughs> oh, okay. I, I assume so. It's, so. it's Lion King esque. I, I assume. Uh, I assume. Okay. That's what I assume. Yeah, that's weird. Because that's like the aim. That's gonna be really weird if it's as violent as the cartoon. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. And this is what I'm getting to say is, you, do you have kids yet? No. Thank God. <laughs> Chad, so, thank God. I've been taking my kids. Like, we watch Darkwing Duck. Like we, how, old's I'm, your, I, uh, how old's your... I've got a four-year-old, newly eight, and a newly ten. Oh, so, so you got three. Yeah, I've got three. And let me tell you, man, I've, we've been doing like Darkwing Duck. Let's cool. get dangerous. Classic. Oh, yeah. Classic. I've been going through the whole... Like the eighties Ninja Turtles. Like we've we just been going through like oh, DuckTales. Like I'm, I'm hitting, I'm hitting a lot good. of stuff, right? And, and there's some new stuff too, but I'll tell you because I've been watching, you know, I don't watch a whole lot of TV, but I try to like, they'll say, Hey dad, let's watch a show together. So maybe Saturday morning we'll do a show. Right. And then we go out and do activities together. Right. And we've been watching. And so sometimes they want to watch a new cartoon. And I've really noticed the eighties and nineties, but predominantly the, 80s, the cartoons are a little uh, abrasive compared oh, to the yeah. cartoons today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I remember really it's like violent. there's yeah. like idiots and slam each other and yeah. like you're stupid. Like I mean like just and then you watch today and you're like, wow, our cartoons have gotten really PC. Like yeah, really. it is. I feel like uh, cartoons now really uh, feel good. Like yeah. I feel like cartoons back yeah. in the days would be more about. I-, I knew this would come to cartoons. You guys have. I, uh, every, I don't know how a conversation <laughs> cartoons just come up whenever I talk to people. <laughs> but um. No, I agree. Like cartoons back in the day were like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, because they were all about just beating the hell out. Yeah, man. That was like every cartoon. It was just Tom and Jerry, the Looney Tunes, Transformers. You just beating the hell out of something. Now cartoons are like very feel good. You know, like let's have a let's have an imagination adventure and you know learn something about myself. I'm a little pissed off they got rid of the uh, the dragon in Mulan though. You know. That, that kind of oh Eddie Murphy's yeah, character yeah yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm a little irritated by that but the new Mulan uh, the new Mulan let me down a little bit but you saw it yeah yeah with my kids man so but oh, yeah wow. it was like I well it's kind of a reflection on society I always say that society is actually getting better even yeah. though we're kind of in chaos right now people become less violent as society advances. Do you think that also that might be because they're more docile? They're more like well, we've become uh, more docile. We've become, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, we're real domesticated. That's why we're that's, like that's a bunch of inside cats. Yeah. Yeah. I would hate to live a hundred years. Ago. <laughs> that's a good analogy. It is. Yeah, we don't do we. Yeah, we eat dry food. We don't know how to hunt anything. Yeah, <laughs> I mean maybe maybe Neil, you oh, look like eat, you know how to hunt something. We eat the wet food now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, exactly. Though. <laughs> yeah, I hunt stuff. In the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> I was just telling Neil a minute ago about me, me trying to in the pantry for 45 minutes and exhibiting my willpower and not eating a piece of candy. <laughs> like, legit, in the other room, there's like there was this massive bag that some of the staff just tore into, and it's like a big pile. 
Everybody's like, where'd this come from? I was like, oh, my pantry. And so what's going on is I've got kids, and you know, the Halloween and all the stuff. We don't really eat. The, the children don't eat a lot of candy. They get it rarely, special occasion, because I don't want them dealing with the weight issues I dealt with. So I've got all this candy. And so the other night I had a moment of weakness. I'm in the pantry for like 45 minutes just kind of standing, looking at it, trying to talk myself out of eating this candy. <laughs> and uh, luckily I didn't eat. I didn't give in. But the next morning I, we bagged it all up and brought it here. Yeah. <laughs> it's you good to get it out of, of the house, get it away from you. you know, I haven't had candy. I haven't had that since February 12th. I yeah. haven't. So, you know, like a, yeah, yeah. So we'll That's see. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. As long as we don't count edibles occasionally, you know, edible. Uh, that doesn't count. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't, yeah. That's a special little thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's not candy. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, this was uh, for, for focus and, and, and all kinds of things, just to relax, you know. Yeah. <laughs> or not relax. Or not relax. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. Get a little, you know, too much in yeah. you. Know. Yeah, plus a little caffeine, and it's a, it's a as, <laughs> as Chris Wild would say, it's a damn good time for all. <laughs> Uh, Does anybody else remember Chris Wiles other than me? I remember Chris Wiles. Yeah, yeah, man. Chris Wiles, he sounds like a nature guy. I yeah, don't know. He so sounds like he was a stand-up wild comedian. Cat. Stand-up comedian and he he did oh, the wow. he opened for he did the open uh and and kind of ran the show he, for He hosted at the Comedy Zone. Comedy Zone. I know a lot of a lot of people are, aren't as big a fan like the local guys cuz Comedy Zone plays by different setups. You know, they did have a little bit of different setup. Oh, so he used to he used to go over the Well, a long time when I was like 13 that's where I would go because yeah. my father and Whoa. Paul, the guy that owned it, are uh, our friends, and uh, we we eventually ended up becoming business partners and some other stuff. But I grew up going there and listening to Chris Wiles. So I remember that because yeah. I used to go back in the late nineties, yeah. early two thousand. Some wow, yeah. I've always been enjoyed comedy. I've been I've been uh, an avid. Uh, uh, <laughs> Patron, but but never been on the other side. You so might have seen consumer um, of comedy. Yeah, I'm a consumer oh, yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. you might have seen um, Anthony Crawford there yeah. or uh, Jordan Fisher. Fisher, or, yeah, I think yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, or even Trundy, you know, Eric Trundy. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. yeah, James Hodge. I don't, yeah. I don't know if any, you remember any of them. Wish, uh, wish Steve and Jenny would just buy out the comedy zone. Just have a whole just monopoly on two, Greensboro yeah. comedy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I would support that. I support that. Though. Yeah. yeah, looks like they're doing. They're doing. I mean, they're growing. They're doing well. They got the. They got the the uh, bar next door. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. What is, it, what is it called? It's called. Uh, no, it's called next, next door. door bar. Next yeah. door bar. Yeah, it's very easy. Yeah, yeah. very creative. Very yeah. creative. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, I was. Uh, yeah, I was really excited. Um, for the festival that was going to be this year, the there is going to yeah. it's still going to happen, um, but in, like 2021, the NC Comedy Festival, the NC Comedy Festival yeah. that was going to be, uh, that, yeah, that was going to be great. That's usually pretty big, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She had uh, she had like a ton of comics. She booked like like hundreds of comedians. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. She, she was like, uh, I think she said if like even half of them dropped out, she'd still like have like. A good another, show. Yeah, like a ton of people to what, do. When's that going to happen? Do you know? I think she said. I don't, I think May, May okay. me, something like that. That's cool. I really feel, and this gets super controversial. I feel like the air conditioning's on, first of all. It's heat. Is it heat? Oh, okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. I'm going to be a little bitch and get my hoodie in a minute. It's not, um, it's not super warm. <laughs> <it's heat. laughs> but um, I feel like, you know, and, and this, this, without getting political, you know, some vaccines are out. People are, are starting to take them officially. The timeline's irrelevant, other than the fact, I, I think it's an indicator of if, if, 40 million or 100 million or 10 million or however many vaccines go out in theory i think that's a sign of as with like the flu vaccine and these other things like hopefully some of the severe nature of this and this all the stuff hopefully some of the hysteria around it starts to go away and i think that'll take let's say 60 90 days i mean are we talking february march april i just like to see because i know this is carried into the 21 but i feel like things like you're saying they should start to fix them i think the world starts opening back up you know, proper medical care and the vaccines and all those things. I feel like some of these events can start, you know, really getting back to. I hope so, because well, this year was brutal. Something yeah. to consider, too, is that media makes a lot of money on controversy or, yes. or you know, getting people excited, you know, fear, that type no, of thing. 100%. So they, they, always, they always indulge in this stuff. And, and it's always and been like that, too. It's yeah, it always has. been yeah. like since, uh, like, even, like, you had, like, muck, what is it, muckrackers? Muckrackers? Yeah, uh, back like the, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, oh, like yeah. Citizen Kane and stuff like. Oh all yeah, yeah. Those dudes back, like even the turn of the century, yeah. you know, just like stirring up shit, just like you know, uh, because people, 
yeah, people love that, you know. And then yeah. you had like CNN doing it's it. Yeah, yeah. sensational. Yeah. I don't remember the statistic, but there's a, a show out about it on Netflix right now that mentions this. But it's, it was showing how many people spend like five times as much time watching something that's negative as they do something that's positive. Mm. Like oh, it, cap, the, it holds uh, their attention better. Yeah. That, that, um, the social dilemma. Social dilemma. Yeah. yeah. Talks oh about yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. I did watch that. I didn't. My big problem was. A, uh, with that was it felt too much like an after school special you know what I mean? like I half expected someone to come out like he wanted some reefer kid you know what I mean? like, that's what it felt yeah. like it felt like, like I agree like I agree all that stuff on Facebook and Instagram probably is really detrimental to our health but if they you let it be. did the corniest job yeah. trying yeah. to show me that I shouldn't do that like it might as well have been like a abstinent like an hour long yeah. abstinence thing I mean well, yeah. see, I'm, a, I'm a technology guy I love technology and science and I, and I believe that we're just in a weird phase in society where we don't really understand a lot of people don't know how to deal with the technology you know like there's we have access to so much information and knowledge that we, we're not sure how to sift through it properly and how to you know what's the bullshit and what's real you know that, that, that type of thing but I think we're getting better I think the younger generations are probably handling it better than most of us and um, a lot of it's just taking the time to you know, don't just read the title of an article. Yeah. Actually, read the article. Because yeah, the title is not going to be the read. same thing. You're asking people to read. Though. Have someone read you the article. <laughs> you know, and, or, or like uh, with social media, people need to stop arguing with each other about stuff. You know, just, just have a conversation or, or don't have a conversation. Because it's not, it's not accomplishing. It's just pissing people off. And then the algorithms will just keep sending you more of what you're into. So yeah. if you're into negative... It just sends you deeper into your own rabbit hole. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, you're just yeah. digging your own hole. Yeah. When, and, it's, and it's all you. Like, if, if, if you're stressed out about social media, mm-hmm. just look at positive things. Like, I try to just make sure I like, like all my friends' kids' pictures and family pictures, and, you know, and that's all I see is just positive things on social media. I don't see all this crazy news stuff. <laughs> I read that on my own. I, I read my own news from the sources I follow and, and I'll usually read different takes on different topics. Yeah. And, and I don't talk about it because it does, I don't need to, I just need to read it, you know? And it's, and it's uh, it's hard now to find news that does, it's not based on opinion too, because opinions sell, right? Yeah. If you can, if you can, yeah, it's all op Yeah. Oh, if, yeah. If you can hit something with a certain twist on it or something that's going to attract this group of people that you're automatically going to, get that many views and this that's a problem but yeah i think we'll figure that out though i think we'll get past that but regarding the pandemic it's the same thing you know I, they're like well we might be in this for two more years like that no we're not two like there's there's a oh. there's there are two really good vaccines out right now yeah and and they're um they're really breakthroughs in vaccine technology they're rna rna vaccines so you don't have to have the the dead virus in your body it's, it's just they're taking a benign virus, they're modifying the genes of that virus and giving it a trait that's the same as the coronavirus, which has these little spikes that come out of it. And when they put this benign virus in your body, your, your body reacts to it and it activates your immune system and it, and it gives the same immune response that the coronavirus would cause your body to have. So you suddenly have the antibodies that will protect you against coronavirus. Huh. So and I don't know. Is that tr- is the thing true? Where it was like so out of the loop on a lot of stuff. It's not nanotechnology. Like, it's going to or whatever. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, no. Kidding, no. Kidding, <laughs> no, but some people are. They believe that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, no. Not. That. I was going to ask because um, I haven't kept. Uh, do you know uh, about like uh, the uh, is the immune is there an Im- uh, uh, an immunity or whatever? Because I I heard somewhere read somewhere probably heard you know. Uh, but uh, they can like re get it or whatever. You can like just because you had it doesn't necessarily mean uh, you won't get it again. They, they don't know yet. Oh, they sure. don't know. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a lot of the, there's so, a lot of unknown. So the the question know. is, um, it's a similar virus to the cold, uh, to like the rhinovirus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, which you can get every year, and the flu is the same way. You can get it every year. So hopefully well, this is like, not that way. But the flu is like always, mo- like the flu is like always changing. Like I, I'm pretty sure isn't yeah, the flu like more, now it, different yeah. from like the flu a hundred years ago. It changes every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's why the flu shot doesn't completely protect you against the flu. Okay, yeah. It's only certain strains, but it does protect you from last to year's a, flu. It protects yeah. you to a degree against all the strains. Mm-hmm. Um, but so you'll get less sick if you get the strain that's not directly in the 
than the vaccine. But with coronavirus, apparently it hasn't modified that much. It's not, a, it's not uh, resistant to antibodies. So that shouldn't be an issue with that. If you get vaccinated, most people, like 90-some percent of the people who get vaccinated will be immune to the coronavirus, hopefully forever. But uh, if not, it'll be like maybe you'll get a booster shot every year or something. Um, and also another thing, too, uh, and I don't know about this because I, I just haven't read about it, but I know with, like, the uh, swine flu, the other coronavirus from, that was much yeah. more deadly a few years ago, several years ago, back in, like, 2000. Yeah, none of, that, none of the crazy things happening now <laughs> happened with swine flu, I remember. It was relatively right, – yeah. like, it was, it was freak out. It was, bit, it was so deadly it didn't spread as fast either. I think – yeah, I think that's, like – Coronavirus is like a, a genius virus. Like he got it right. Like he yeah. he's nailing it because he he didn't go over the top. <laughs> he didn't go over the top with the the symptoms. You know what I mean? Like the COVID doesn't have like you're not bleeding from your eyeballs. Right. Like, yeah. if it was, yeah. like if it was something like that, you'd be like, oh my god. Like people would stay. Like right. people would yeah. not talk. Like you well. know. But like it's all, people are like it's a it's like the flu. Uh, get out. You know what I mean? And then they're like, but you know that's how we got in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good that's a good example because you're right. If 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 the symptoms were like you start bleeding from your eyeballs, I think I probably would have been like, you know, uh, I'm just not even interested in trying that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't even want to risk it. I don't even want to risk it. And if you started bleeding from your dick, you just it would oh yeah, yeah, I'd be if done. Fell off, Everything's yeah. closed. Yeah. Yeah. If all <laughs> men, if all men, if this was the period for men, if this is what gave men periods out the dick hole, I'd be like, no, every guy would have been wearing masks. Yeah, oh yeah, we'd have yeah. a cure already. Oh yeah. <laughs> I get the, we'd get the vaccine twice just to be sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, but uh, so so I, hopefully, like the the swine flu, you don't hear much. Of it. It's still there, it's still out here, but it's very rare. And hopefully, this one will be similar to that one. We're just sort of sort of fade away, and we won't hear much about it. Um, but I think uh, you know these vaccines are available now. They're going to start going to the people that need them the most: the medical staff. Uh, Elderly, High, higher risk people, elderly people, people that have underlying health health conditions, um, because if you read the CDC's uh, statistics, uh, the data shows that ninety four percent of the people who have died from COVID all had underlying health conditions, and most of them were elderly, and then the other six percent that died only from COVID nineteen, uh, most of those were elderly too. So if you're if you're younger and healthy. Um, then, then your chances of having a really bad experience are pretty low. It could still happen, but it's yeah. not, not likely. Yeah, and those people don't really care <laughs> with yeah. the kids, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And ki- well, like, kids, kids are not very susceptible around, to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're like. Um, and, and there's, you know, hopefully, uh, well, they believe that the, the the percentage of people that have had it is actually a lot higher than what they know, mm. because there's a lot of asymptomatic people. Like I had it, and my symptoms were pretty mild. I, I feel like I had a, had a cold. Uh, but he had it, and he was pretty sick. So <laughs> yes, it was a. Uh, I still worked every day, you know, and in a secluded way. But but yeah, it was it was especially towards the end. Um, but you know, I just got weak because I wasn't mm-hmm. consuming anything really. You know, I was doing Pedialyte. You know, I don't know, three to six liters a day, depending on the day. Yeah, wow. usually two liters before I left the house, kind of deal. But yeah. Yeah, so, but yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it got a little brutal there towards the end, especially. I still don't feel quite like I've got all my lung capacity back, like when I'm doing, like, uh, physical activity. I'll, and you got over, like, what, two weeks ago? This is, it's probably been three or four weeks now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. Still, like, I, it took I'm, me. Um, well, you know, when I get sick, I still f- sometimes feel like some fluid or whatever yeah. in my. Yeah. It took, know. like, I think on day 17 or 18, I finally get it, got get it. I finally got about half of my taste buds back, <laughs> and I still don't have them fully. Like there are some things that I can eat, you just don't taste it. All. That I don't taste still, which mm. is a little weird. What can't you taste? Um, like in uh, bourbon or whiskey, you know that when I don't, do you do you drink bourbon or whiskey? Yes. Do you know the, the initial bite, the initial like that? Yeah. yeah I don't yeah. get that. Whoa. And so during this, like um, <clears throat> at some point where I was not throwing up, but you know the early part of this, but as it advanced. I just was curious because all I tasted was I actually felt a texture. So, like, I bit into an onion like an apple. No effect. Wow. Garlic felt like little rocks. So, bit right in, you know, into a lemon. Just tried various things. You were taste blind, yeah. Yeah, man. I couldn't. You got to, it's like, you're like, you could have been like Stevie Wonder. 100%, bro. Could, <laughs> taste buds, and you know? all I felt was texture. So, like, I, I literally, yeah. just to, just to, just to taste there. some whiskey, I was like, maybe I'll, I'll taste. I didn't taste whiskey at all. Nothing. It's, it could have been water, literally. Wow. Um, 
you know, so really what you have is you have textures and it's interesting. It's, what's <coughs> interesting is some textures really turned me off. I'm like, oh man, this texture's, te-, you know, like it just was like, what the mm. fuck? I mean, like steak is really rubbery. Chicken, yeah, yeah, chicken yeah. is really, fl- it's really liquid and, and it's softer and it, it feels watery, right? Like, oh. like chicken breast. Like, I don't, I don't know, man. You just really dial in on texture. Yeah, no, because yeah, I was about to say it, because when I, I'm trying to think, like, I, I couldn't really, I mean, I could, like, vaguely describe the texture of some foods, but I'm really, you know, mo- you're into the flavor. Everyone's into yeah. the flavor. Yeah, exactly. Flavor, but you yeah. never really get to the, oh, it, yeah, the texture. Of oh, it sucked, like, bro. Really in- <laughs> it sucked. It sucked bad. It sucked a bag of dicks, literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could have. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't taste it. No, that's true. But, uh, but now, like, that, that's the thing. I think there's some, some flavors where... I'm just missing, like, to give you an example, I don't feel like I'm fully tasting, like, I use sea, sea salt and pink Himalayan salt and black pepper. That's all, that's the only thing I use to season. The te- the pepper's coming through loud and clear. The salts are not really, for whatever reason, I'm not, oh, wow. I, I still feel a lot of the, the rocky feel of the, uh, the granular feel of the salt, but I don't get that same reaction I used to get from the salt. I think that's probably the way to put it, like, the extreme reaction, like, have you ever had something that's really salty and you get that reaction? Yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm not getting that. So I don't know. It's very weird. There's like little things that are that I'm still noticing that I'm missing. Kind of deal. Well, that's the weird thing about this the virus is uh, the neurological effect. Because that's a neurological side effect. So it's it's actually affecting your uh, your uh, nervous system. Yeah. 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 But so I mean. It's like temporary. Yeah, probably, well, maybe. yeah, it'll come back. Eventually. I mean, oh, okay. yeah. the best thing that happened. Well, he, he doesn't have the worst case. Some people don't have taste for months. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I wonder if anyone like just lost it forever. You know, they just, maybe. Like, I get, so they could be the Stevie Wonder of, 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 of flavor. They could really <laughs> get to what makes a good, you know. Just just be texture texture testers. Yeah, I mean, for no. real. It's a whole world of so, food that we're just like not looking at. You know what yeah. I mean? I went very Matrix after our last podcast, and I was thinking about this. Because somebody had brought up, they're like, how do I know that what I feel is chicken or steak? How'd they get it right, right? Like, I got very... Very matrix, like, because when all the taste was removed, and like you're saying, it's neurological, is that what it tastes like? Because when I'm eating it and all I taste was, I didn't taste anything, it's just textures. Mm -hmm. There was no taste. Well, really, taste isn't real. That's what I'm saying. So, like, (laughs) I went down this rabbit hole. I'm like, oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so I was like, okay, but But nothing's real, though. It's all perception. It's all in your brain, yeah. Yeah. It's all in your brain. It's just how we we decode it, but it's... Yeah. We have have similar hardware. We all have similar hardware, so we all have a similar experience. But, yeah, yeah, it's not... It's it's all perception. Yeah, so I I basically (laughs) came to the conclusion at the end is that I wasn't eating out of a joy of food, which sucks, because I, as a formerly very overweight and still overweight guy, I enjoy food. I enjoy eating. So when you take the joy out of it, then you realize what am I you're, you're literally yeah. just eating because you need the nutrient value, right? You need, you need yep. your, your, that's you what it comes eat, down to. Or, really or all these little things that live in your body really want that food. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of changes your perspective a little bit, but yeah, man, getting the most of the taste buds back, um, has been nice, but yeah, there's no bite. And I would love to tell you that I'm just a whiskey drinker and I've built it up over time. That's not the case. I sip. And I've barely had any. Well, now you can become a raging alcoholic. I could, and, yeah, and I wouldn't even. I was about to say, yeah, you could just <laughs> yeah. down it. Yeah, man. But, um, but yeah, for whatever reason, that initial bite is gone, and I can't taste. Like, I used to take the, the bourbon or something and just swirl it around in my mouth and kind of, like, really so enjoy it. you're a connoisseur. The, you're a full-on. Yeah, well, that's no, what's good about tried to be, and yeah. stuff, yeah. And, and try to really get the taste and, like, and then, you know, breathe out through my nose so that way I can really taste it kind of deal. And that, about three-fourths of that, like, I miss most of it. Yeah. So... You know, so I'm not sure when it's all coming back, but who knows? But anyway, I, 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 it was no fun. <laughs> the, I spent all the time talking about my taste because food that was the most that was the hardest part for me. Oh, I can imagine that. Would, all the other bullshit taste, was yeah, like, oh, I can live with all that, but yeah, and I can't taste my food. <laughs> 103 degree fever for two days. Yeah, yeah, when I, yeah, yeah. Throwing up, sick and weak, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 103.7. Oh, I, I can't taste my food. What the fuck? <laughs> And 1037 is high for me. I usually run like like everybody's like 98.7 or whatever. That's the average. I usually run low. So oh. so 1037 is actually really high for me because I'm usually about a degree lower um, than that. So See, that's like what I usually run when I run a fever. Like I always run hot. I'm always like in the hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's interesting. I, mean, I, I don't have, know. Have yeah, you I don't been know. to the doctor about this? <laughs> I mean – 
Uh, I mean, high. it was like that when I was a kid. Uh, I haven't really had like crazy fevers. I don't really get like sick like that. Uh, like in recent years, but when I was a kid, it was always like burning fevers. You know? Yeah. 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 I was a really sick kid. <laughs> I had the flu several times when I was a kid. Flu and strep oh, yeah. throat and stuff. Oh, yeah. I had. Uh, I, had I never had issues yet. getting over it, but I, I got it pretty often. At least once a year, maybe twice a year. Yeah, I always I I always hated being sick, but I would I would yeah I would get sick a lot, strep, pneumonia, you know. I didn't mind it. Stay home. Really? My, my I would just get like so <laughs> I would get like re- I mean I would stay home too, but I would get like so in my head, like I would get like those uh those delirious fevers, you know. The first day like, it sucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's yeah. just like you know, it's like it feels like you're falling, but you're just <laughs> like, like you're, you're literally just laying down. But it feels like you're skydiving. Like, oh wow! Oh uh, yeah. I've, <laughs> I've rarely had that, but that feeling sucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's the feeling of dying. Yeah, <laughs> something that's like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> like you're sitting still, but you don't feel like you're sitting still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It feels like you know you're moving through it. It's almost yeah. like tripping a little. Got bit. Got the spins. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. That back in the day when I was a kid, that would have been. Hey, I, that's where that's where mom comes in. You need mom, or, oh, or yeah. as I've gotten older, that's where you get you you, you, you just turn into bitch mode and you get your wife to hold you. <laughs> <laughs> hold me. Yeah. But see, you know, it's hand. nice to be held, though. You know, it, I, is. it is. It is. There is something still about um, being held oh, and, and pet and stuff like. That. I'll oh. say this. I. I don't care. I I love being Little Spoon. I'll say it. You know? <laughs> I love being Little Spoon. Nobody wants to talk about it. Everyone's like Big Spoon. I love being the Little Spoon, dude. I love being held and cradled. <laughs> it's nice. It's comforting. I can see why the ladies like it. You know. Uh, I like it. I like it. Yeah. I want, yeah. I, I would. Uh, yeah. I. I mean. Uh, you know, my girl. She would always. You know, want me to spoon her. But you know, like. All right. Let's. Can we? My turn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Switch it up. When I'm feeling really bad, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll like curl up. <clears throat> like I, I know I'm a big guy, but I turn into like I get much smaller apparently when I'm sick. <laughs> and so she just kind of wraps me up. It's pretty awesome actually. I kind of feel like a little bitch when I'm doing it, but I don't care. Uh, my wife you hates me when like I'm sick. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Daniel hates me when I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you're a tough guy until you get sick. I, I do go into, I, I do full True. mode, yeah. Yeah, me too, <laughs> man, me too. I'm just if I'm really useless, sick. Just helpless, man. Yeah. Like I just, I complain yeah. constantly, <laughs> eat all the soup. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Well, it's like, Don't do when anything. you're sick, it's like the perfect excuse to be the most annoying. Yes. I mean, yeah. it's like, you can really just let it, I mean, you can't get mad. I mean, they're sick. I mean. Yeah. But then, you know, my wife, she's. She's not the friendliest tor- towards me when I'm sick either, so I kind of have to, I have <laughs> like to keep it in check, you know? Yeah, 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 I agree. I can only ask so many times. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you're on your own now. Uh, Suffer. That's, that's funny. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so. Man. Well, speaking of tripping, I know you, uh, you guys are into the... Um, Which part? Uh, <laughs> He's like... Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm in. I'm, okay, in. I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. We say I'm, you're more of a um, an LSD guy or more of a um, mushroom guy, I guess. Uh, I can only attest to one at the point, but okay. um, I think for me, what I'm trying to do is anything in a, a manner that I can. Who is it? Is it Steve Jobs that said that Apple wouldn't be? He what said it never is? would have started uh, Apple if he hadn't done LSD. Yeah, so like yeah. that's what makes yeah. me open to it, and I think. Yeah. I think here in North Carolina, there's this very, very taboo still in certain areas, right? But then you go to certain places. I've actually, obviously, California being one, where it's like you got a really interesting climate in California where they don't have non competes there. So you can't bar employees from jumping from company to company to company. But what ends up happening is these strong companies end up attracting the best employees, right? Yeah. Or the wealthiest companies end up attracting the best employees, which and it, and it has this innovation thing. But I also think what happens is you've got like a, a pocket of people in in California, this, the tech, whatever they call it. Mm-hmm. And I Silicon think they're Valley. Silicon yeah. Valley. Yeah, I feel like they're more open to things that are going to change their perspective or open their, their yeah. eyes so they can actually see and kind of maybe come at things from a different way and come up with different solutions. And I feel like in other areas of the country, there's less of that. So, you know... You know we're still we're in the Bible Belt here, and I think it's behind. But yeah. I, I think there's a lot of positive things that can come from certain oh, things. Hundred percent. And you were telling me about um, people with PTSD. So so yeah, the drug war is. Um, 
Also, I, I, I brought, I, I didn't know if you guys brought, uh, brought it up on you. You got like the businessman thing. I was like, I don't know if you guys, you guys I don't know. Well, we're talking about anything. Talk about everything. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Well, yeah, and, and <laughs> I didn't want to. It's the, the, yeah, yeah, the ev- nothing's off limits. And you see, sure. and, and immediately, like I'm talking about the, the, also the business side yeah. of it. Like I think it, and then the medical side of what can it help cure, which you're the PTSD stuff. What is yeah. it about the. Yeah. So, you know, so the drug war is, has really given out a lot of misinformation about psychedelics in general. Because it's, it's, it's terrible to categorize all chemicals as drugs, yeah. especially the ones that come from nature, right. like straight from nature. I mean, every, everything's nature, too, right? It's yeah. all the same stuff. We just we manipulate things. Yeah, it's chemistry. But we're really, nature. Yeah. So, but, um, but there are definitely drugs that are addictive that can ruin your life, you know, and, um, and I personally have no interest in that type of stuff. Agreed. It's just uh, I think those things are more attractive to people that are, trying to escape something in life and I'm more the type of person that likes to face life head on but uh, with psychedelics and especially in like you're talking about in the uh, medical field um, you know doing a lot of studies on on the the uh, treatment of PTSD using psychedelics uh, like mushrooms or psilocybin and and LSD and uh, they're having incredible results I mean they've got patients that have severe PTSD and they're they're not responsive to traditional medications SSRIs and stuff and they and this have is through like microdosing no this is through uh, full-on full psychedelic on experiences wow. and uh, they give them high doses of psilocybin and sometimes after even just one experience they're almost completely cured of their PTSD something like uh, in some of their studies, they're showing like 60 plus percent of the people that go through the studies mm. a year later still don't have PTSD. Whoa. Which okay, is, I was about to ask. I was like, yeah, is, how long um, does it like last for? Like, uh, it's very have to successful. Do it, you know, there's there's so never often. been a there's never been a drug <laughs> trial that had this type of success with, with these type oh. these types of mental issues. And it also helps. Okay, yeah, it makes I feel like, yeah, it really puts you. But it's it's not uh, like people that don't know anything about psychedelics they think well it's just getting you high and it's yeah. it's going to help you escape reality but it's actually it's, it's the opposite it's it's more of um it it makes you more aware you know it, it expands your mind mm-hmm. and and it makes you reevaluate your entire life it makes you look at things a lot differently and um they're very powerful. Yeah. Well, see, things, to those, so. I feel like to people in power, that's a scary thing. Yeah, maybe. You know, they yeah. don't want everyone, you know, <laughs> being, you know, chasing their uh, their happiness or whatever. Well, also, know. a lot of people are. I mean, we've been, you know, like think about like our parents' age and stuff. Like all that stuff was the devil. Yeah. 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 It's, it's yeah. All demonized. Like LSD, yeah. you know, like you know, pot's okay if I catch you with that. But if you ever do, you know, you do seven hits of acid, you're going to be insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, but you, well, you might be insane if you do seven hits of acid. You might be seeing the devil. <laughs> At least but briefly, I, right? Yeah. 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 But um, you know. Uh, I've never encountered that or anything like that, but you know, it's yeah. it's just interesting. We're dealing with walls that have been built a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. that we're having to dismantle because we're smarter now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, if you look at if you look at the the drug studies, I mean, the most dangerous drug in our society, the most dangerous drugs in our society are alcohol and tobacco. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Th- those kill and, way and, more people. And you can buy those legally. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And all, exactly. all of the all of the the classical psychedelics are at the very bottom of the list because they're not addictive. I mean, they really make people not want to do drugs. Yeah. Uh, they did studies back in the 50s and 60s with LSD, and it was one of the best things that they found to treat alcoholism. It would just make people stop drinking. And, and I, hmm. I, I think, you know, those, t- those, those compounds reset people's brains. Yeah. You know, so they give you kind of a fresh start. It is kind of like, yeah, like, a, yeah. like a mental rebirth. Yeah, and then and they, like, even with marijuana, you know, that was like illegalized, uh, you know, to go after like, uh, you know, uh, Mexican, you know, any South American uh, like immigrants, you know what I mean? Yeah. That was popular, you know, I guess in those uh, communities, so they outlawed it, you know. Well, the whole like, drug war is based <laughs> on uh, going after the civil rights movement. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and the anti-war movement. Yeah, and that that was that was the purpose because they, the scientists were saying, hey, look these psychedelic drugs are actually really good for treating certain ailments. And we're doing a lot of research with these. Please don't 
make them illegal because we need to do and they're not harmful they're not causing any physical harm for people you know uh so in a controlled setting in the the proper set and setting they're they're very safe yeah and they're helping people but uh specifically with cannabis you know it was real common in, in black communities and, and in the anti-war movement and that was richard Nick, nixon's enemy so yeah. he passed he passed this uh drug bill back then and yeah. shut it all down it's crazy because like cannabis now is just like uh it's like a cure-all, you Man. know what I mean? Yeah. Like people like now, it's like it's CBD and THC. Man. It's just there's, like there's the the THC and the CBD though. There's some really positive things coming like uh, yeah. you know, children with seizures. Like yeah, I mean like there's yeah. some really awesome medical uses mm-hmm. for some of these things. And I'll tell you, I know people that that will smoke, and they've come basically completely off all their antidepressants and like, you know, so like you know, like I mean, if they're overwhelmed or stressed out, they'll smoke instead, right? Yeah. And yeah. I got to tell you, it's I don't know of anybody that's ever died from marijuana, but there's a lot of people who have died really in in well, you relation can't, to really. um, antidepressants and all that other yeah. stuff too. So yeah, those, yeah, those, yeah. Those, those kill you know, but yeah, it's, it, yeah, those lab made things are far worse for you than I think yeah. like the natural stuff or whatever. Well, here's here's uh, that's part of what's coming out now. It's an my take on that though. I think you know, and maybe it's in Oregon. They just decriminalized, yeah, decriminalized all drugs. Yeah, and I think that's the way they should do it because. Giving people felonies, I, I don't think anyone should do heroin or yeah. cocaine. I mean, mm-hmm. cocaine. I guess if they want to do it, and they can, <laughs> and, and they, and it's their time. They should be able to do whatever they want to do. Yeah. I mean, really, if you're, you know, freedom is responsibility, and I, and I believe that you should be able to do whatever you want to do as long as you're not affecting other people or hurting other people. Yeah. You know, it's, it's your body, it's your consciousness. If you want to do with it as you please, that's that should be your, your right. Um, but I think with the drug war and and especially with with addicts. Giving them felonies does not help them. It makes them worse. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I think there's a way that you could regulate these drugs and take a, and take a, a portion of that money, like that create a tax that instead it goes into prisons, it would go into rehabilitation facilities and programs for people that want help. You know? And I, I would imagine a lot of the people that are drug addicts and stuff probably have other issues that have led them down that path, yeah. maybe yeah. abuse or... or see, uh, that goes against uh, the... You know, prison industrial complex. You know, oh, yeah. they can't. That's yeah, true. they can't. Yeah. They can't have their uh, their slaves. So you know, I agree. What happened. Well, one of the biggest proponents of of legalizing marijuana has been the uh, prison lobby. Oh yeah. yeah, you know, not surprising. You know, because that's you get rid of that. It's like you know, uh, that's like most of the people in. But there, here's the right? here's the thing you know? though. There's just as much opportunity on the the rehabilitation side on the the health and wellness side as there is on that on that side they just they're just looking at it the wrong way you know and 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 as, and especially with the psychedelics because you know like i said those are those get people off drugs you know those, those make people better people yeah um they just make people question things which yeah. some people don't like that yeah exactly exactly yeah you question because yeah. then you question authority you question what you're doing with your life and then you yeah. know that's just one less person these uh this they, you know what I mean? We yeah. always say they, you know, these guys. You, yeah. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> very vague. Well, it's, it's really it. It's, very, it's always it's, very vague. You know, you just know it's a they, it's a them, you know? It's really it's an like it. Who? It's a who system. Who is it really? It's a system. It's a system, it's, but it's a who, is, system. who is, yeah, the government system. But I guess it's well, like, yeah, yeah, it's so, I mean, it's so, I don't know, I guess my point is like, you never really can have like, that's the guy, that's the guy who did it, you know what I mean? Or that that's the group of people. It's always kind of like, I mean, could you off the top of your head name the names, I feel like, you know, responsible for a lot of, you know, these... But, well, uh, you know, it, issues. We, we give our politicians too much power. Mm. It's really us doing it. You think it. it's the politicians? Because I think the politicians well, they're are a big just part tools. Of it. I think... Um, well, they, they, they are the ones that vote on the laws. Yeah, they are, but and I feel like they're... They, they call them bill makers. Yeah, I, I know, I know yeah. that, but I mean, like, I don't know, I feel like it's... Uh, You're talking about lo- the lobbyists. Yeah, I'm talking about lobbyists. I'm talking about uh, people paying these guys. Well, it's, it's, the, it's the ability to manipulate politicians. Yeah, yeah. To, to buy them off, and that's, that's problematic. And, uh, yeah, the, I mean, we need to... We probably need to overhaul the system and fix the issue with lobbyists and, and yeah. And you have these big corporations that have so much power and control over over and influence over our political system. Sure. But we also, as as citizens, need to realize that we live in a, a democratic republic. So we we are technically the government. the The government officials are really supposed to be our representatives. They're supposed mm-hmm. to be public servants of of the people. 
and supposed and, to. And but but we have decided to call them leaders. Yeah. And look at them as more of rulers instead of representatives. So and then there's the problem of half our country don't vote. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, but I think I think these things are getting better. I mean, there's still plenty of problems. But it's harder, it's harder for people to be lied to today because right. you do have – if you're willing to put in the effort, you can find the truth most of the time, mm-hmm. whereas 20 years ago you couldn't. But yeah, I think – but the truth is like – yeah, it, it takes effort, and I think a lot of people don't want to put in you know, effort and stuff. I mean, it's so easy to just like – uh, you know, buy into like the the. Well, it's sh- easier to listen to what someone tells you. Yeah, that than and, read yeah, it for yourself. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you and know. also, uh, people have ideology. I I don't like ideology. I think ideology is dangerous because your ideology may be different from mine. Yeah. What's important is that we have a constitution. We have individual rights. Right. And that's like my ideology stops where your rights begin. Yeah. You know, and I, I yeah. I'm not really an ideological person anyway, but. Uh, a lot of people are. A lot of people have oh, yeah. really strong ideologies, and they don't care about the Constitution. They don't care about individual rights. They just care. They just want things to be they, the way they want them, and that's that. Com- that's completely the opposite of how our society was designed to be. Yeah. You know, it was supposed to be a diverse society with yeah, some people with have ideas. a family crest. You know, it's yeah. a family motto. They. You, you just. Follow. I mean, ideas are what make society, right? So. It's good to have a diverse range of ideas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one thing I like about, like, especially, I guess, like, um, you know, we said some mean things about America, so now we got to compliment America. I don't think those are mean things. things. No, no, no. uh, (laughs) No, one thing I like about America is, um, you know, it's so diverse. You know what I mean? Like, we have, like, we have, like, every kind of person or whatever, like, um, in the country. You know what I mean? We have, like, so many different, like, uh, it's like a melting pot or whatever. It's like uh, so many different perspectives, so many different people. Uh, you know, interacting with, with the, uh, each other. You don't get that like in a lot of places in the world. I well, guess, yeah, you we. Know. I love America, and I think it's a in, an incredible country. We have a lot of problems, <clears throat> but I feel like in a lot of ways we have a lot less problems than some other places. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we so. are really lucky. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we uh-huh. are really lucky. Like, um, you know, uh, people people are acting like America's becoming like a fascist place or whatever i don't think no i don't it's think not. it's becoming a fascist i mean we have questionable leaders or whatever but i don't think that it makes us you know. i don't think a lot of people understand what fascist means oh sure i think i think yeah <laughs> people, right. people like throwing words out yeah. yeah people like throwing words out, you know, the definition that they don't know yeah yeah uh, uh, I, th- I think we'll be fine i think we just have to i think the biggest problem we have right now is we can't communicate i think people I like to talk to people who have different mm. opinions than me. Yeah, me too, yeah. Because it, it, you, you need to understand. We're all part of the same. That's another thing we talk about a lot is that our society is people. People make the society. Sure. And we look at people as, as liabilities instead of assets, but we should all look at each other's assets to the society we live in because we're all a part of it. We're all one thing. I think yeah. all humanity, I think all life is one, so, one uh, thing. So let me ask you, are you guys into um – like so, like uh, what is it? The like synchronicity that um like that idea of yeah that like are a, a collective unconscious I, I believe is what it's. I, I think there's something um, like that. Some, prob- yeah, some deep thing that's just like innate yeah. in every person, just like this this well of consciousness that you know we can just like tap into almost. I don't I, mean? I don't know exactly Maybe what it's a little what mystical or whatever, but um, from you know from a science perspective. I don't so you're th- very hard facts. So you're very, you know, I see it. That's what I believe. Well, I mean, science is so incredible. We know, yeah, so, yeah, we know yeah. so little. I don't think you need to create any kind of magic. I think it's kind of magical in, in itself. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. And, science is magic, really. If and, about it, well, I think just, just the, our, our reality is a lot more than we can imagine, you know. And, sure. and I think there is a connection between all life. I think it's all one organism. You know, I think all life on the planet is one organism. And maybe throughout the universe. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we have... You know, scientists like know that. there's dark matter in, in, in space, but they can't see it. They can't find it. It's there. So what else is out there that we can't find or see or even comprehend? Oh, yeah. There's, yeah. like, sound waves. In, we in can't multiple dimensions. Hear, you know? Yeah, there's, yeah. there's yeah. multiple dimensions we don't have access to. Yeah. So there's so much we don't know. We may know 1% of what reality is. Yeah, we really don't even is. know it's, like, at the bottom of the ocean. You know what I mean? Like, I agree. Right. Yeah. This so, yeah. But uh, I, I do believe that uh, as we advance with our technology and technology is exponential so 
you can't base what we've done over the past 100 years on what we're going to do in the next 10 years. The next 10 years might be 1,000 years in advancement or thousands of years. You know, so I Isn't think... Isn't it like going up exponentially? Or yeah, it's exponential. Yeah. yeah, the growth of technology is exponential. And that's, that's our anthill. That's what we... We're the conscious ants of reality that are building this technological anthill. And we don't know what it is or where it goes. Yeah. But I, I have an intuition that we will probably merge with technology if you follow guys like Ray Kurzweil and Elon Musk and some of these yeah. other brilliant scientists and engineers. Yeah, dude, Elon Musk said we're, like, uh, we're already like cyborgs. Uh, that kind we of we are. Yeah, really, yeah, we yeah. got the phone right there. That, that, that kind of blew my yeah. mind a little so, bit. So I think in 10 years we'll probably be somehow connected to technology. We'll probably link to the it'll internet. Be like a, it'll be like a Blade yeah. Runner. And, and it's funny. I was listening to a podcast this week with uh, – have you heard of Lex Friedman? He's a scientist. That sounds like a scientist. Alien no, that sounds like a scientist. No, it's um, he's he's a uh, computer scientist. He's a brilliant dude, and he had a guy on there from uh, Harvard, actually, uh, one of the guys that does psychedelic studies. And but this guy's also really big into technology, and he he said he thinks that we will because we're doing some really cool stuff with genetics right now too. Um, like at Harvard, actually, they're doing some insane genetic research where they're trying to reverse aging. They believe they can cure the disease of death. Oh, Jesus. And, and, and even <laughs> Jesus. in the near future, this they can start reversing your yeah. age. Um, so there's a, there's a chance we may live to be hundreds of years old. But even if we don't... Do we need to, though? <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't mind that? it. But, but I think... I, think I don't, don't want to be hundreds of years old. Well, you don't today, but if you increase your intelligence by a million times or a billion times, you wouldn't yeah. be the same thing either. So I think that once we start merging with the technology in about 10 years, mm. possibly. Yeah, and they're talking about like uploading your mind or whatever into... Um, well, well, think about it this way. So if, if they... We need some stacks. If they do something like what Elon Musk has, which is Neuralink, which is an implant, which I think it'll probably be more like what Ray Kurzweil believes. It's going to be like nanotechnology they can insert in your cerebral cortex that interacts with technology and allows us to interact with each other. So at that point we can interact telepathically and I could just say, hey, check out this experience I had. I went, went out west and checked out this cool place and I just send you that information, yeah. you take it in and you had the same experience and you're like, oh, wait a minute, was that you or me? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, you don't Are know, you, me? you can't We're, separate reality and then, and then we become one, one thing, right? Or we have some kind of firewall technology where we still remain individuals but we can share exponentially with each other and at that point, you got to think about this too. If you become a million times, or say you become millions of times more intelligent mm -hmm. because you've been enhanced, well, at that time, at, at that moment, time stops. You know, you, you uh, we're talking about psychedelics. When it's a psychedelic experience, time can cease, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and you just, it's like your brain is going so fast, you have unlimited amounts, like you're in eternity. Yeah, it feels like you're in the same moment almost, you know? For I mean? a minute. Yeah, like it's like, yeah, it's like a single, never ending moment. You yeah, know? but so with, with this kind of technology, if you could become millions or billions of times more intelligent, well, if, if, I, was a, if I were millions of times more intelligent than you, and you asked me a question. You probably are. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you you, you me, know so much about this stuff. If you asked me a question, uh, in, the, in the one second it took me to respond to your question, I would have... A million answers, yeah. Well, I would have the equivalent of maybe a year or years of time to think about an answer. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I, would, I would be doing all this other stuff while I'm talking to you. Uh -huh. And so like, if we're all like that, then we suddenly have infinite amounts of time. So if you become that intelligent, your brain is able to process information so quickly, time stops. Then maybe we actually start operating into a, in a different dimension. Maybe we, we have like this virtual dimension that we live in that we occasionally come out every thousand years to eat, which in our human time is a couple hours. But in that other dimension that we're living in, in our minds, that's just as real as this, that's a thousand years. We're like these eternal beings that could just live in this virtual world. What is time? So, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> time is, is relative, right? Mm, that's interesting. And, ti and time may not even be real. Actually, time and space may not be real. We all may be in one singularity. We may be in one point of information, and we're just data. See, we this just idea of time it. isn't real. I, my thing with that, though, is I feel like... 
Time's objectively real. I feel like well, we could all you live. Time is real born. for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like there is, yeah. uh, like in the sense that like time passes. I mean, you uh, the idea of like oh, it's an hour or whatever. That's you know relative or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, you uh, you do objectively objectively age and you know come to an end and stuff like that. Well, you do see time pass you by. I mean, you see the world change. You experience. Yeah, yeah. Well, you perceive yeah, you know. time. That's yeah. that's time. But isn't also, it? Isn't if, that time? If, if I'm accelerating, if if I can get into a spaceship and accelerate at a certain speed. Mm-hmm. We're at the speed of light. I will age dramatically slower than you. Yeah. Like my experience of time would be different than yours. You know, so mm. I could I could blast yeah. off in a spaceship. At, oh, like Interstellar. Yeah. That was a pretty good movie. Or if you're close to a, no one talks a, about a, it. a big yeah. object, you're going to, you know, time is going to be different. You know, yeah. time is relative based on gravity and based on speed. The faster you move, the slower your time moves. So, well, there was a Weird. movie or a guy really smart mathematician that has been trying to get the U.S. calendar changed, and we'll have to look this up. To what? To He, he wants, I think it's 28 days in every single month, because he did the math, and he was mm. showing how his way of doing it was correct, and that it's been being done wrong the entire time, and that Monday will always be on the same day every year. So, like, if it's January 2nd, it's a Monday, it will always be January 2nd. It eliminates leap year, and it does all these things. Yeah, because it is so confusing now. It is. You know? It is. Especially but, with the daylight savings and stuff like there's that. There's this we whole big push this. of what the real calendar is. And, and when he goes back and tracks it um, uh, since the earliest known calendar, since we went to the system, and when he projects his data forward, it shows that the day that we think today is is actually very different. I think it's we, we've lost over all this time. We've wow. lost periods where actually time is... Time is passing at a different rate than what we even think it is. Maybe we're all younger than we think we are. Yeah. Or <laughs> we're going to have to find a link to this. But well, uh, That makes yeah, sense because a lot of our time and our systems built on the revolution of the, the right. Earth as it circles in the length of a day. So I could see like... He said his way is, faster, is more slower. accurate. Right. Right. And he talks about that. And he says his way is more accurate, but he can't get anybody to... So he's got all these things it. showing. Well, they because this is the way our society. This yeah. it's come down to money, right? Yeah. And to make this type of overhaul and change, well, what about all the people that were born on these days that don't exist anymore, right? Moving forward. Oh, you're right. But so he's. It'd be kind of cool to say my birthday doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like the day I was born doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, what he would do is he would go back in based on that counter. You just may not have been born on the day you thought you were, but he shows how his. His stuff like is more Monday, Friday different or like mon- one. Well, two, yeah, because in, the- in theory, basically, you may have thought you were born, but because the calendar got off over over, oh, okay, over okay, hundreds okay. of years, the calendar got off. It wasn't accurate that day. You thought it was a Wednesday on the 12th, but in actuality, it was a Monday on on the previous month. Oh, right. That would totally see. That's not going to happen because uh, all these white girls, uh, it's going to fuck all their zodiac shit up. And, and they don't have anything to talk about anymore. That's why it's not going to happen. The zodiac is the reason. <laughs> the zodiac is the reason. The zodiac mafia. Will <laughs> the zodiac. This from happening. <laughs> so, uh, but but yeah, he got a lot of push. But it, he actually has all these studies that show his calendar is more accurate. And his rec- his way of record of timekeeping is more accurate. And I'm like, I'm looking, I'm like, you know, this guy could be a quack. But then I look at him, I'm like, well, actually, what he's saying kind of makes sense. You know, I thought the same thing when Neil deGrasse Tyson um, was trying to uh, degrade Pluto, you know, he was trying <laughs> to demote Pluto. I felt the same way. I'm like, this guy's a quack. This yeah, guy's yeah. out of his mind. Yeah. Like, yeah, actually, I kind of get a little pissy about that, too. The Pluto, <laughs> yeah. Pluto supporter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm Pluto neutral. Yeah, well, now I am. But at the time, I was a little pissed off about it. I was like, <laughs> I think everybody gets in that thing of... Yeah, this, well, you this, grew up with Pluto. I mean, I get yeah. it, because you grew up with Pluto. Exactly. I, mean. well, I think that this becomes, and I had to open my mind to it, but the reality is, is things change. And we know, and you get a, you have to yeah. spread knowledge as you know it today, but I think everybody needs to take the tack that, that, that what we know, in air quotes, what we know is up for change. Yeah. It's up for, for, for new discovery, right? And, and it, there's an evolution of everything, right? And so our understanding of it has to be fluid enough to know that, that it can evolve over time, right? Things, you know, we may think yeah. one thing is the right way to do it, but flat earth yeah 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 it's crazy that's coming back but can you imagine oh, like man. back then like um all those guys who, who grew up believing the earth was flat and then yeah. some guy didn't know didn't they hang him or whatever who said that it was like Galileo. Uh, or they hung that guy or something. Like, like, they're always mean to scientists yeah, they're quite yeah. Sure. <laughs> a lot of it's tied to the churches because yeah, you know because yeah. 
I, I think that these are all things are systems of control that oh, over yeah. time have been degraded, but it's taken, and, and the way we perceive time, it's taken hundreds of years to do that. Yeah. And, and in reverse, it's a, it, it, it snapped. It was a snap. Like it's already taken place, but in reverse, what we've really seen is hundreds of years of, of science and, and technology and, and advancements chipping away at these things that I think were more about control originally. Yeah, no. You know? Like, I think, like, I'm not, um, like, religious in any sense. Um, but Doesn't it sound like something a dad would say to a child? And I try not to lie to my children, what? but, like, you can't go out on that water because if you get to the end of it, you'll fall off the edge of the earth. Like, you can't leave home. Yeah. Like, I imagine this started <laughs> is, because some yeah. 16-year-old man was like, I'm going to leave. I'm going out exploring, you know, and... Oh no! You'll fall off the edge yeah, of the world. Better stay here. Yeah. That's what I say. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know where it originated, but I, I've got some weird. Uh, some. It just seems like something a parent would tell yeah. as a horror story to keep to to, to deter a baby. Well, yeah, it's a right. form of control. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, so the church the did order. it. Somebody did it. You know, a lot of these things that we perceive, I think, are are based on that. I think some people are uncomfortable with their perception of the world being shaken or questioned or yeah or anything and they just hold really tight onto that yeah. and it's like dude come that on that was me with pluto yeah. a little yeah, bit because it was like yeah, a norm yeah. for me i was like wait what do you mean you mean all this time i was we were wrong about pluto really fuck you guys man <laughs> <laughs> but it was all good i got over it you know it lasted it, it, it was like a, a it was a couple of days of, of being irritated and then i got past it i was like ah, i doesn't fucking matter yeah so. <laughs> i mean hell yeah how long can you yeah. it'd be funny if you had this like you know, year long rivalry with the yeah. old grass type. Yeah, yeah. And we'll start wearing shirts like yeah. never never Pluto and then somebody else could have the other side of it. <laughs> never forget Pluto. Never forget Pluto, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Pluto being a minor planet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's actually bigger objects out there than Pluto though. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Watch like Earth not even be a planet technically or something. Oh, it's like, a planet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no question about that one. It's an eyeball. No. It's the best planet. Oh man. In our solar funny. solar system anyway. Oh yeah. no! Saturn's pretty cool. Saturn's got rings. Yeah, Saturn's as my, got rings. my as my eight year old. Oh, it's not. Yeah, Saturn's my eight year old would tell you that uh, that you, that you can't live on that planet. <laughs> he loves planets. Oh, that's so cool. I used to uh, be cool. really into. Uh, oh yeah, he loves he loves planets and, and the stars and and He's he got draws. A telescope. He constantly draws like. It's funny the way he does it, but he constantly draws like his vision of the universe. Oh, that's cool. So like, he like, he's big into the. What's his vision the, of the universe? Like, like like the way it the way they uh, the way the so like you know you see like the planets and oh, the usually, solar system like yeah. the solar system you see them in a certain way. Well, his way looks different. Oh, that's cool. It's just like unique the way he kind yeah, of yeah, and then yeah. the sizes and he'll tell me he'll be like oh no no this one ha you got to make it bigger because he knows which ones are. He's like it's five times the size of this one so he'll tell me oh, that your your circle's <laughs> oh, not cool, big man. enough so he's. He's got some basic, but he's really into it. So we got uh, things that project up on the universe, up on his ceiling. He really likes. That's really and, cool. Yeah, he's been. What into about it for, a telescope? We do not have a telescope yet. Um, That's a good gift. We, we were talking about this previously. Yeah. Um, I was even talking about, you know, because we don't have a lot of light pollution after, which he doesn't stay up this late right now. But like after eleven o'clock at night, where we live, there's no light pollution, yeah, so you, you can see the stars. Oh. It's really nice. So that's what we were, we were talking about, and his, and his um, room has a per, I think a perfect window to do this. So, but uh, but yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, like, definitely. You got an astronomer on your hands. Yeah, that's maybe, cool. yep. maybe. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. He he's got some interest. I think you've got a tel a nice telescope, don't you? Yeah, I've got a pretty big one. It's a you got a Hubble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what he. That's his nickname for it. I, I, I launched it a few years ago. Had SpaceX <laughs> put it up there for me. <laughs> Uh, no, I've got a, uh, I don't know the brand, but it's, it's got a 12-inch, like, can. Oh, wow. It. Yeah. Yeah. Big lens. Yeah, it's a pretty big telescope. Yeah. I was thinking more yeah. something like, you know, more modest, six six yeah. to eight inches kind of deal, you know, a little something, a little right. more average. Go all the way. Oh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> the most thing. Uh, Buy him an observatory. Yeah. <laughs> I will name it after him. <laughs> so, yeah, that's funny. What's your go-to, by the way? So you you were talking about, I know comedy's not been as much, but like when you got on stage, did you have, I know you've got like sets and you get all these things, but did you have like a go-to, like I'm going to talk about this topic when I get up here and that's like your go-to, it's what you're known for? Um. Oh, n like, oh, a thing like I'm known for talking about? Yeah, like I mean, a shtick or a... I have a, sh I guess a shtick or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, do, I do have things I um like... N not like intentionally, you know, I try to talk about like different things, but I do like come back to certain topics or whatever, or I just find myself like with a new, I guess, take on the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, 
Yeah, it's not really like uh, I'm trying to like work. It's just like I guess like uh, I'm passionate about like certain things or whatever. You know what I mean? I guess if you're into like certain things, they're just naturally going to be like talking points for yeah. you at different stages or whatever. But um, I mean, I do have like I mean, I have like an act. Uh, I have like a routine that I do. But uh, sometimes you know, I just get up there uh, with an idea. I'm trying to like work out or just you know. Yeah. How long is your set right now? <sighs> like your full set. Um, <laughs> uh, I, to be honest with you, I, uh, I feel like I have anywhere from like, uh, I want to say like at least 10 minutes and I know that's like not a lot or whatever, but I throw out material all the time. I like, <laughs> well, how long I, was your last set then? Uh, what do you mean? Like, like the last, last time I performed? Set? Yeah. Uh, I did, I did like 12 minutes okay. last time I was on stage. Uh, but yeah, I, I throw stuff out all the time. I bring stuff back because, uh, I don't know. I, I just, like, s- cycle out jokes a lot. You yeah. Know? That seems like the perfect amazing. amount of time. Yeah, like I mean. 10, 12 minutes. That's a long time. No, <laughs> I mean, sometimes, really. Sometimes, you know. I, I, it's, if sometimes, it, I mean, it seems like a lot, but, I mean, normally there are guys out here doing, like, you know, 30 minutes. Sure. You know, it's not, like, headliner time or anything. And, again, I, I've only been, you know, I'm still, like, an amateur, I guess, uh, you know. Uh technically or whatever uh but yeah 10 I, you know i usually i have like I, i'd say i have like 10 minutes of stuff i uh i believe in i guess okay. I, <laughs> <laughs> I have 10 minutes of stuff i have like you know i'm like okay i can do this and i know for a fact you know it'll do well the rest of it it's right. just like you know uh maybe i i I feel like some of it's just not all the way there yet. I, I still feel like, developed. yeah, I feel like most of my stuff isn't even, I don't know. I don't know. Can you say any of your jokes are ever complete, but I, I feel right. like a lot of my stuff is just always under construction. You know yeah, what I yeah. Mean? yeah. Like I feel well, like my we're jokes, always under construction. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 I mean, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That is a good, yeah. I just feel like, yeah, I'm constantly just like, you know, just like, yeah. Cause I, I'm a, I'm a bad, I'm really bad. I know creatively about like, um, finishing stuff that's my big uh problem not even just like creatively as a person i think i start things so often uh and i never like i've started so many projects i just never can finish the the thing you know what i mean like uh so many times you know trying to pick up an instrument you know i'm on it for like you know maybe a month and then, you know, I'm like, all right, ne- on to the new thing, on to the next thing. Yeah. I don't know if it's just because, like, I can't focus or I have, like, this, I don't know, mentality. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. You What's know, the but, instrument? The, uh, they, wait, like, you're picking up an instrument. What, what have they been? Uh, uh, guitar, uh, drums. Uh, I tried the piano for a bit. Um, but, you know, <laughs> oh, I just always fall off. I think some oh, of us just... Oh, I had a, um, a uh, what is it, the, um, a lute. It was like a, it was oh, like yeah, a, yeah. It was like a banjo lute kind of thing. Oh, okay. It was weird. Uh, I spent, like, <laughs> you guys are good with money. Right? It's because I'm the exact opposite. <laughs> I spent more than I want to admit on this stupid little fucking banjo thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I played it for, like, a month. And then now it's just, like, sitting in my fucking closet, you know. It's not just you, man. I struggle. I'll tell you. I don't know why. Like I'm, I'm like, and I'm, I'm the opposite of lazy. Like literally, I, I, I believe that. But then there's certain things I just can't get in my routine. And instruments is one of them. I grew up playing the piano. I haven't yeah. really touched the piano in, in a, with any real consideration for like a decade. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe uh, two decades. Like if we want to really get technical. But um, I've got guitars, and they've become they're functional art for me. Like, I like the way they look. I, I, I bought it for a lot of reasons, and then it happens to be something that has a function to it, right? Yeah. And that's, like, my thought process. So you should get a way to mount your loot. They sell these hands, these decorative or designer hands Did online. Have it up? That is and, a good and idea. And mount it and have it on the wall, and now now it's a functional it, it artwork. It looks cool. Yeah, yeah it looks yeah, that cool. That is a good idea. I should do that. That's what I do. And so it's functional artwork. It looks. It, it, it adds to the – it's like a piece of furniture, right? Yeah. And or, so, you know, like a vinyl record, you know. Some yeah. people put, like, records exactly. up. Exactly. You know, part of the – pull the room together. That's the way I look at it. it, it it's, it's functional artwork, and then occasionally I get it down. But I've had the damnedest time with – I, I read constantly. I work. Con- I mean, like, I've got things that are routine. They're built in. Mm-hmm. I cannot seem to get guitar, drums, these other things, or even a piano back into my routine. And I actually enjoy it when I do it. The problem is, is I'm not able to c- consistently do it, which, sure. so I, it's a challenge. It's hard. And I kind of bounce around a little bit, kind of how I'm feeling, but I've been kind of doing the same thing. So I, I love the piano, actually. Oh, so you're, 
I grew up. Uh, my mom uh, and uh, uh, love you, mom. She's gonna debate Shit. this probably, but uh, <laughs> she'll debate this with me probably. But uh, my mom basically made some comment that only um, country rednecks play guitar when I was a kid, and that I should play piano. Right now, you got Now my father played guitar just to give you some context. So right? you got so, music in the family. Yeah. So well, so my mom was basically calling. On some way or form, my mom was calling my dad a country redneck, right? And that she wanted me to learn the piano. But then she would follow that up. She said some version of that. And then she followed that up with, if you know how to read sheet music for a piano, you can play any instrument, which I do agree. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Right? Yeah, I heard, like, isn't it like the guitar and the piano? Like, they're like same the, thing. This is the, the same laid out thing. the same way? Yeah. 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 So, um, and I think that that was more of a joke from her, like, because a stab at my dad when I was young that I just caught on to, you know, like, oh, you know. And she wanted me to do that, but she wanted me to do it so I'd learn to read sheet music. So I can sit at a piano right now, I'm sure, Whoa. and and play a little, you know, the go-tos yeah, of yeah. all the people that took lessons for any period of time. I can play some Furley. So Ode I can, to Joy. Uh, yeah, I can. I mean, you know, just the basic beginner. But I can get down and I can do enough for, for 10, like kind of like your comedy set. You've got, you've got like 10, 12 minutes of good. I've probably got 10, 12 minutes that I can fake it. And then from there, okay. I'm like, uh, so, um, but I can't read the music the way I used to be able to read it. It takes me, I used to read it almost like I read a book, right? Mm, okay. And I could translate okay. it really fast. Now I'm really struggling to read it, like, because I just haven't practiced. But I imagine it'll come back quickly. But that's on my list, too, man. I want to, I, I kind of, it's therapeutic, and I kind of want to get back into it. I've been meaning to, like, um Cover was a perfect opportunity too. To I know like I missed sit, it. To sit I missed back it. And yeah. Like actually try because I have a I have a guitar. I actually have a good, like I still have my guitar just in my like in the closet. That's yeah. where I collect everything. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, it needs I, to be up on the wall. It should be up on the wall. Maybe, maybe if I see it more, it might inspire me too. You know, yeah. it's right there. You know, yeah, yeah like you said. And when people come over, they're going to ask you, do you play? I'm like, well, it's functional artwork. Yeah, you know, I actually did <laughs> what learn. What does that um, mean? Well, when yeah. I'm not playing, it's artwork. <laughs> if you play, you can yeah, play yeah, have artwork. It. Yeah, yeah right. they, they, you know, they want you to pull it down. You know, you can do. I actually learned um, Marie's The Name um, by Elvis. I, that's like the only song. I know a little bit of Cecilia by Paul Simon, but those are the only two, like, songs I, uh, I know on the guitar. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I think... I think when it comes to instruments and stuff like that, like your main thing is comedy. That's where you need to spend the most of your time yeah. is writing and working. I actually, on your lately, I've been trying to like uh, just write more in general, um, uh, like not jokes. Actually, just you know, just like uh, creative writing or yeah, whatever. Because yeah. um, I find that actually helps stimulate, I guess, like the creative side of your brain mm -hmm. or whatever, right. it's, regardless yeah. if it's good or not. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've been actually just like, because I'm really bad about like just sitting on the side. I've actually been pretty good about every day just like taking some time and yeah. sitting down and actually just like writing, just going on some good. page. But the problem again, you know, I started all these stories and I, I never finish anything. But I think, I think also, um, and this is with not just artists or not just creative people, it's also in business. I think there's something you have to be really careful like you, you need to know what's paying your bills, right? Yeah. Like your biggest talent, like what you, like, like for me, I know that business is, is is very important. Mm -hmm. I, I I enjoy it, I'm good at it, and it's also what pays most of my bills. So I have to make sure that I, no matter what I do outside of that, I've got to keep focused on that, because you, you there's something, especially um, when you're becoming successful at something. There's something that happens to a lot of people. You you start to you start to do good at something, and then it like scares you, and then you try to do something else. You're like, oh, maybe I should do this instead. No, just keep doing that thing that you're getting good at, and master it and get better at it. You know, like uh, like with comedy, it's good that you sit down and write other stuff because that's still creative. It's yeah. part of that creative pop process. But make sure you're writing jokes too. Oh yeah, yeah because yeah. you're still you still need to keep sharpening that blade. Um, and, and, yeah, and I kind of see it like it's like a, like Batman's belt, you know, it's like a comedy belt. It's yeah. good to, I feel like it's always good to have like other things on the right. belt to know how to be able to uh, creatively write, to uh, know how to do a little bit of improv, to know how to yeah. you know just do all these other things because you know I feel like all these things help come together. Like stand-up comedy is very unique in that um, it involves all these different like what's well, experiences in your life, right? Uh, what as far as what? stand up comedy? Oh yeah, yeah, is, yeah. Is, is yeah. Like it's like yeah, an from, expression like, your of yeah. your personal experiences yeah, yeah, yeah. and opinions and 
yeah, ideas. But yeah. like, yeah, but like bringing it to life, you got to know how to like, you know, be on the stage a little bit. There's a there's a performance art to it. There's a you know a writing aspect to it. You know, yeah. there's an introspective aspect to it. You know what I mean? Like you know, musicians or whatever, they got to like, and even comedy, you got to have like, there's a rhythm to comedy. You yes. got to like timing and stuff oh, yeah. like that. You know it's what I mean? Yeah, it's like a mix of acting, writing, music. It's like all these different kind of things like together in this weird hybrid. You right, know? yeah. Except like the uh, the instrument is like, I guess, uh, the audience or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that's like the yeah. uh, instrument you're playing. You're controlling that instrument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your jokes, I guess, are the chords. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. I like it. I like it. But what you were saying about the not being able to follow through with instruments and stuff like that. Well, I mean, really to get really good at an instrument, you have to spend a lot of time. And maybe you just don't have time to invest in that instrument. I mean, I know like drummers, like professional drummers, spend at least eight hours a day playing the drums. Yeah, I can't spend eight hours a day playing <laughs> the drums. Yeah, I just have drums just so I can just play around with them. Yeah, and it's just it's it's therapeutic. It's fun. Yeah, you know, I can keep a little beat and just kind of work at that energy. You know, that extra energy, that I creative th- energy. I think it's really important to try. You know, being a creative mind or just anybody that likes to do things. In life, I think it's important yeah. to try a bunch of stuff. Yeah, because yeah, you know you're activated. It's mm-hmm. a lot of people go through life like, no, I can't do that. Well, have you ever tried? And it's still fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like good I, for it's like good for your soul. It's actually, actually yeah. good for your. That sounds yeah. corny, but it actually it is, is good for your your soul and heart. Yeah. Like expressing yourself uh, and stuff like that. It doesn't even matter. Yeah, I, I think uh, people get too wrapped up in like, oh, I'm not going to be any good at it. You're, you know, it's but it, that's not. But you don't have what, to be. That you don't have. It's not about. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. you don't need to be good at it. I mean, because uh, no matter what level you're functioning at with it, it's still benefiting uh, who you are as yes, a, as still a on, person. Yeah, it's your, helping you your mood express that like creativity. That. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, too many people I don't I think don't like do that, and I think <laughs> I think that's why we. Have, I mean, there's a lot of unhappy people who do do art and stuff like that, but I, I think people who don't do any of it are especially unhappy. Yeah. yeah, but like for me, for for the time, the the majority of the time I invest in anything, and I've consolidated a lot of my business to just consulting, and and outside of consulting, it's all my art is kind of the same stuff. It's like acting, screenwriting, comedy. It's all related, right? Um, so if I'm not working on something that's business related, I'm usually writing. And, uh, most of my writing right now is comedy. Uh, I'm doing a little screenwriting, but most of it is, is just focused on comedy, but it's writing, it's creative writing. So it's, it's helping me hone that craft. Yeah. And then, and then when I play music, if I play a guitar, play the guitar at the house or the drums or whatever, it's, it's extra time. You know, it's maybe it's really late. I just have a lot of energy, so I'll just go up there and 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 just play the guitar a little, or play the drums. Just kind of work out that energy and yeah. just kind You're of doing it for yourself. free your mind. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I'm not thinking about anything except for that instrument, and just kind of just calming things down. You know, mm. or or just working it out. Yeah, I think it's therapeutic. Yeah, I agree. It definitely is. Yeah, I got to ask you: Have you come up with any COVID nineteen jokes yet? I've got one I'm I'm trying to flesh out between like between like uh memes and different things I've heard. And I, I don't know. I'm gonna make my, my comedy debut one day. Your hour on COVID. Yeah, yeah. I COVID was thinking special. like some version of COVID's already too long. It's too much. Yeah. <laughs> There's too much material on COVID. Like, you know, let's imagine hey you meant like your girlfriend's a hoe, right? I gotta find some way to talk about some slut, right? And your girlfriend's a hoe. She spreads so fast. She spreads her legs so fast. We're gonna call her COVID nineteen, or something like that. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I haven't quite got it yet. But I'm trying to take like pieces just, of memes. You and, just say your sister. Yeah, 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 yeah. My Ooh. sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't have a he sister. Didn't have a sister. <laughs> I don't have a sister. So it works that great. Works. <laughs> My sister spreads so fast. Spreads her legs so fast. We're gonna call her COVID nineteen. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. I gotta figure it out, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have one joke. I'll have it worked out. It'll take me about six months. I'll have a joke worked out. I haven't really uh, <laughs> talked too much about uh, not necessarily COVID. I guess just like you know the, the stuff I've been doing, uh, you know, while in lockdown or whatever. Depression. Yeah, I mean, but here's the thing, my th- thing also is like, you know, what am I going to talk about uh, what I was doing? Yeah, you know, I was at home, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's so much. I mean, I don't Thinking know. about playing the guitar. Yeah, 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 yeah. thinking about playing guitar. I hit it in the closet. Doing it, yeah. <laughs> 
You you hid your guitar in the closet. I hid my scale in the closet for the same reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes I hide in the closet. <laughs> oh, oh, <no. laughs> Guys, that's I'm what closets are for. Yes, yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> uh, sorry, I call my closet my pantry. The closet sometimes by accident, it's a Freudian slip, but. I don't ever go stand in my closet and just look at my clothes, but I definitely go stand in my, my pantry and look at my really? food. I, uh, no, I actually do uh, spend a lot of time in the closet. I actually work in my closet. Do you? <laughs> yes, I, do. I, like, I, I have like, um, I don't even have a desk. I just have like um, a footstool uh, and like a, like a lab, like a computer chair in my closet. It's like big enough for like, you know, a footstool and a computer chair. And I just put my laptop in there and I'm just like hunched over like next to my coats, just like typing you away. You just like the, tight spaces. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, it's not even that. Well, it's you said like, you like to be spooned. I do. <laughs> so like, I, do. I do. This is turning into a therapy. Uh, session. <laughs> tell, no. tell me more. <laughs> Uh, no, I'll unload some shit on here. <laughs> but uh, no, I do like, uh, yeah, I just like, uh, I just go in there and just, and maybe there is something about it like um, less distractions maybe. It's yeah. just like everything's so close. I can only look at the screen of the computer and look <sighs> sit down. And, I'm not, right. I'm not proud of the story I'm about to tell you, but because <sighs> I'm, this is pre me having kids, but, but I always had a soft spot for kids, right? Like I didn't like when people did dumb shit to their kids. And this is a dumb shit story. So we had this uh, house in, in Charleston, South Carolina. And, and in typical fashion, like when we travel, we're big groups of people. But especially when we were first trying to make it, we didn't have a lot of money. So we shared rooms. Like literally, we have like eight guys with us. And we're trying to figure out how to get into one hotel suite, right? Mm -hmm. Like getting rollaway beds, you know, two to a bed. Whatever we got to do. So one's on the couch, like cots on the floor. Whatever we got to do, right? So when we first got our... When we had our operations and uh, we were growing, we, we decided to rent a house finally, right, and put everybody there. So we had, like, this community house, and we had staff that would work at various things. And, and instead of staying in hotels, if anybody was commuting near there, they would stay there. Well, we ended up with a permanent resident in one of the rooms, and I was wondering why they kept they, – they were adamant. They were like, well, we got to have the master with the, the, with the walk-in closet. And I was like, well, I mean, I was, wasn't there as much as often. That was in my head. I was like, no, it's fine. So then we fast-forward, like – I don't know, 90 days, I was back in town, and um, there was something going on, some event, and we went out, and I was like, hey, uh, and, and this couple was together, and they were there, and I'm like, hey, where's your kid? They're like, oh, he's in his room. Their kid's like three, three years old at this time. They're like, oh, he's in his room. I'm like, where at? Who's with him? They're like, no, 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 he's by himself. He's asleep. He's in his room. I'm like, he's in y'all's room? He goes, no, he's in his room. I was like, where's his room? They had turned the closet into the nursery, right? And that was his room. And they put a lock on it. What? And they locked him in the closet. I was like, oh my God. I was like, you did what? And this is pre-me kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, man, one of y'all's got to leave. Like, you can't just lock your kid in the closet and, yeah. and, and both of y'all leave the house. Like, one of y'all's got to go home. Like, you can't. Y'all can alternate coming out tonight, yeah, but one of y'all. like Harry Potter. Yeah, man, like yeah. locked his ass in the closet. It's worse. Like, that was his room. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to ask you, man, your parents didn't lock you in the closet, did they? Like, <laughs> No, they didn't lock me in the closet, but, I mean, they did lose me. <laughs> they would lose me, and it seemed like they didn't notice. So yeah. I remember, like, all, I, this ha it happened. What, what year were you born? I was born in uh, 97. Oh, you're really? young. You're yeah. Young. yeah. Wow, I just felt really old. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you. I was like, I can't tell if you're early twenties or like late twenties because because your age, but definitely more of an early twenties vibe. I was like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Someone once, uh, I don't know if it's because I look it. Someone thought. Wait, so that being like, said, with your age, having five years of comedic experience, four, four, four yeah. is 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 uh, trying to give me an extra year. Yeah, I, you know, to, I gotta, yeah. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta check get you, myself. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta Better <laughs> check yourself. <before> you <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Four years of experience. Yeah. But that's still that's still impressive, especially when you consider you're younger than we were thinking. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. how, how old? Thirty. If you say thirty, I swear to God, I, I'll walk out. I was sitting here looking, and I was like, I can't tell if he's twenty. Okay. Or twenty-five to thirty. Twenty-five's not. Uh, because twenty-five's not that. That was, might as well. Yeah, this. I was thinking twenty-five. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's yeah. the yeah. same, pretty much. I mean. Yeah, you're in that range. I was looking at Neil's picture with his hair, and I was looking at your hair, and he's cut it short now. And I was like, Neil wishes his hair was long again, temporary, <laughs> just based you on yours. A, you did have a nice, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. a nice head bush. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he was he was rocking it. This this actually looks more this like does, a, it, this looks, looks 
Yeah. Yeah. It looks more like the Neil I know though, like oh, from okay. from a long time ago. Yeah. It looks so. more businessy. You look more like because like, you know. Uh, yeah, that's you true. Have the ponytail. I like you know this this guy owns businesses. Yeah. What you know? There's a business in the front, a party just, in the yeah, back, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the mullet. <laughs> it it could have been. Could have been, been though. Yeah. It could have been. But um, yeah, yeah. This is yeah. You got the no. It is a nice trim. You do. I, did I say? I think I did compliment your haircut. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. It is a nice haircut. I've got a buddy named uh, named Heath, and him and a couple of his buddies there for like a few weeks at least in COVID during COVID times. Mm-hmm. COVID times, they rocked the mullet. Like they went full like '80s retro. It's interesting. I was thinking they, about even, it. Even did the tried to do the beard like the, the you know that white uh, trash mullet look. <laughs> That's what they were <laughs> like going the Tiger for. Tiger King. And yeah, Spider man. Tiger and this King was and probably yeah. because of that. Now that I think about yeah. that, probably, yeah. yeah. They were Tiger. I, th- I, I saw Tiger King too. I was thinking, you know, uh, you know, uh, yeah. do I want to be the guy? <laughs> you know, who's going to see it? Who's going to know? It's amazing how uh, changing the way your hair and your beard looks can really uh, class or trash it up. Oh, for real. <laughs> I, you know, I say um, the best feeling I get is after a haircut. That's like the best. Yeah. You feel like you're like, oh my god, I'm turning my life around. <laughs> Just <feel> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every time. Yeah. Adulting. Yeah. <laughs> so, I haven't had a haircut. Um, uh, my barber's coming out next week. If you want to get uh, get get really close, shout out to uh, Brandon. Shout out to Brandon. <laughs> but uh, I th- <laughs> 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 you know, I'm trying to just uh, you know I'm kind of just uh, rolling with it. I guess right now. Yeah, yeah, man. We'll give you a military cut, high and tight. Whatever you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I've never. I would say I've never gone, but I've never had it like all the way. Um, actually, I've never been bald. As a matter of fact, I came out of the womb full head of hair. Oh, nice. Yeah. See? So how did your parents lose you? <laughs> We're coming back to that. Uh, I mean, just like, just being irresponsible, really. I mean. You or them? Uh, no, no. They, <laughs> I mean, both. But you're an irresponsible them. three-year-old. Because, uh, Don't you know you're supposed to stay locked in the closet? <laughs> exactly. No, I, no, just like multiple times. I just remember my parents would like have me and like my sibling, like me and my brother or whatever um, at the, uh, the grocery store or just wherever. And. Uh, I met multiple times. It's happened more than once. We would, my brother and I would just, I don't know, I don't even know how, but we'd lose our parent or we'd lose like our dad or whatever in the grocery store. And like, we'd be like freaking out, like where the, where the fuck is, you know, his dad at or whatever. And so we'd be like panicking, like looking all over the store. And then we finally find him. And it's like he didn't even notice we were gone. Like, you know, I swear, like we just walk up and he, he just, he didn't even know. Like he didn't acknowledge it. I don't, I don't know if like you know, it's just like yeah. I, I used know. to do that all the time when I was a kid. Back in run away. That was in the eighties though, so it was normal. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like nobody cared back then. <laughs> it's just like, oh, my kid will show up before I leave. That's fun. Yeah. yeah. He'll, find, he'll find me. I, I remember when a pager came out because I wasn't like I was in like sixth or seventh grade and the pager, or maybe it came out before that. But I remember when my family was wealthy enough to afford a pager for me. So I remember because it was a big change. I used to just go. I'd, I'd get up and they'd be, like, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to do such and such. And I'm riding my bike, you know, so that's pretty 20 fuck. I'm riding my bike 20 miles. To, I'm going into town. I'm doing, I would just go exploring sure. and do stuff, right? It was normal. Yeah. Right. And I mean, literally, I went and did all kinds of things. But I remember getting the pager and I was like, I hate this fucking pager. Because what would happen is when they wanted me to come home, they would send me a page. Uh, right. So, my, uh, so it kind of sucked because prior to that. You know, I just could come home when I wanted to come home. And, and yeah. if it was a little late, you know, hey, we want you here before dark. Like, that was the rule. Like, if I came on a little late, I, get a little, I got yelled at. But then when the pager came around, it became... There's no excuse. Yeah, yeah now it was like, fuck this pager. Yeah. So anyway. Pagers didn't exist until I was about 13 or 14, probably. Yeah. And yeah, we definitely couldn't afford it, so I didn't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so technology has been, uh, has, has kind of sucked, man. Cause, yeah. Because, you know, it's just different now. Yeah, you can, well, you can track yeah. people or yeah. whatever. Like, I know a guy, um, like, who would, like, him and his girlfriend would... Uh, track each other's locations or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, they share. Like, it. yeah, they, they that's unhealthy. They thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, 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 it is unhealthy. But I'm it not, just shows uh, you like where it's. Are at they now. still together? Can, yeah. Yes, they are. Oh, okay. Yeah, we we I know one or two people that uh, that do that currently, <laughs> and I, I think it's a terrible idea. Yeah. That being said, uh, my family service with my wife because I work all the time. I was like, I don't have anywhere to hide. I was like, you're welcome to ping my phone anytime you'd like. You know, like if you just can't get a hold of me and you're worried. And you need to you need to look have at it right like yeah. it's there if you need it but but the other side of that's definitely not healthy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, yeah. There's a certain level of like codependence or whatever. Yeah, that. yeah. It is. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, it could come in handy if I'm off the side of a ravine or something, right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's like the yeah. idea. That's <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. But, but the I problem mean, is... They're going to find you eventually. Yeah, but they're what about... They're going to find exactly. you eventually. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the problem is the screenshots, like... If you're off the side of a ravine, it probably doesn't matter. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true, too. Yeah. Early, early on when location services started... I got Sorry, honey, I got to tell this joke. My wife's not going to like this, but... <laughs> She won't make it this far. In the yeah, she probably won't make it. You didn't watch it this far. <laughs> Don't lie. Anyway, so uh, my wife sends me a, like a, some version of a screenshot because it wasn't a screenshot, but she sends me, I don't know if she took a picture or something, uploaded it, and then sent it to me. And she's like, because it was very early on in this technology. It wasn't as easy as today. And sends me this. And she's like, whose house are you at? So, like, I do a version of a selfie, you know, before it became what it is today. Uh-huh. And I send a picture literally of me and my brother I'm in my boxers with a tank top on, and he's in his boxers and tank top on next to me, and we're playing some video game. And, like, I've got the headset on, and so we've got a picture taken of me and him, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm not sure where that location thing is, but I'm, you know, I'm playing a video game. Like, it definitely wasn't something yeah. productive, yeah, but it yeah, wasn't yeah. what, but it was off. She's like, whose house is this? But it had me, like, three blocks away at... Actually, we lost, uh, what did we lose? Like an iPad or something last year. And the location services was uh, saying it was, well, actually, Danielle lost her phone recently, and it was saying it was at the, uh, or maybe her, uh, no, it was her AirPods, saying that they were at uh, the grocery store, but they were actually at the house. And then we lost an iPad last year. I think it was one of Isla's, or Isla's iPad. And it was saying it was saying it was outside. I thought, well, maybe it's in the truck. And it went to the truck, and then it, like, moved. Some of us fucking with you. Right? <laughs> yeah. But it was moving around the property, yeah. and it ended up being in the house, too. So, that is, yeah, they're not exactly yeah. right sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Or it's haunted, you know, ghost. Or that. Yeah. 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 Or your, your daughter at the time. How old was she at the time? Two? Three? Three. Yeah. Three? Yeah. yeah, she's fucking with them. <laughs> I'll get running dead. around. <laughs> you, have you ever? Um, have you ever? Have you guys ever lost your kids? No, nah, man, it's no. a different time today, man. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. my kids. My, I'm like a helicopter parent. Gotcha. We both. We're, we're older parents. Too. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. we. We. I, I waited. My wife. I waited nine years. We were together nine years before we started having children. That's, yeah. See, I feel like that's smart though. You yeah. guys you got some wisdom yeah. on you. Got oh your, yeah. You know your oats sold or whatever your wild oats. Yeah. I was 36 when we had Isla, so. You know, we're we're just both. That's not that old. That's not that old. It's not that old, but it's it's a lot older than most parents when they have their first kid. Oh yeah, kid. no, I do. Uh, I know. Yeah. Uh, how I see, how were your parents when they were losing you? Probably in their early twenties. <laughs> <20s. laughs> no, they were not. They were they were too old to be. Cause they, they they lost us a lot. Like, I remember that another time they lost us. <laughs> I think they were testing park. you guys. Yeah, yeah. And then they're like, ah, man. they try to get rid of us. Yeah, <laughs> so like, maybe they won't do, come yeah. back. Yeah, maybe they'll stay gone for a couple of days. We yeah. need a break. You know, it's weird. It's because it was always. Uh, I think I might just. Like it was always me and my brother. My sister never really got. <laughs> she never really, you know, disappeared. Or it was always me and my brother uh, getting lost, separated, or whatever. I think it's just <coughs> little boy thing or whatever. But um, the, the world is so crazy, and there's so much dumb shit going on, especially now. I get weird. But yeah. here's the other thing. You know, it, my son, my ten year old, is not quite there, and they do taekwondo and they do stuff, and they get it, and they know to yell and scream, and and I think that they'll. But the reality is a four-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a 10-year-old can't really defend themselves, right? And my 10-year-old gets to be like 13. Me at 13, I'd have punched a grown man in the face. Now, I'm period. Like, I got to that point at 13, you know, if you're going to try to do something to me, you're not going to enjoy it. It's not going to be a good process. And at 13, I was a big dude at 13. I looked like most probably 17 or 18-year-olds, so as far as size-wise. So I feel like as my son gets a little bit more, I'll I'll lighten up on the reins a little bit. But right now I'm like, I mean, he's ten, and and mind you, but I think he gets hit by a man or gets attacked. Like it's it it's gonna have a real negative effect. Yeah. So I just try to prelim- eliminate that. I'm like, I don't, I want him in. I want to know where he's at. I want to know he's in a, the right neighborhood, the, a safe area. Yeah, yeah. Right, and yeah. and and that he's got a support system nearby. Right, like, so we're we're, <laughs> I'm on the other end of that. Now I've got a, we've got some friends that aren't that way. That they oh, still really? their kids kind of go, and I think that there's a level I of have indep- several friends like that. Yeah, yeah there's a level of independence that those children will have. I think that that there's some benefit to that to them. Like my children will, there's probably some negative to the way we're doing it. Yeah, but I'm okay with that. Like, yeah, you know, it's it's a fair trade off for me. I just can't help it. Plus, yeah, me neither. I was so clumsy. Yeah, I have to constantly watch her. She'll 
fall. Well, you've seen her fall off chairs. Yeah, and stuff. it happens. Yeah. Well, kids, kids are just clumsy in general. Kids nah, are yeah. just always they don't think. getting into things. Yeah, they don't pay attention to Listen, dude, I'm like helicopter. Yeah. We're walking. I'm like, hey, step, step, feet up, big, raise your, lead, raise your legs, step, guys, step. Everywhere, all day while we're together, all day. <laughs> watch your step, watch your, like the step up to the curb. Grab yeah. them constantly. Yeah, gra- all the time, man, all the time. Hey, guys, like right before, here's me as a parent. Before we walk outside, hey, guys, listen, we're going to get in the car. Pay attention. Daniel, watch me. Sebastian, watch me. Guys, hey, you watching? Yes. You got a step by step. All right, we're going to get out of the car. And remember, other cars can't see you guys aren't very tall, right? <laughs> you have to look out for the car, right? What are we going to do to get out of the car? We're going to look for cars dead. Okay, we get out of the car. Guess what the fuck they don't do? Just run. They're just like, traffic. boom, like bolt. <laughs> One starts running, the other ones are running. They're like, oh, I thought a car was coming, and they bolt, right? And I'm like, I'm sitting there like, hey, you know, like, what the fuck are you doing? I don't say that to them, but yeah, I'm sitting yeah. to myself like, I just fucking told you yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that cars can't see you. You're, you're, you're three foot yeah. tall. Like, come on, dude. And, uh, but that's my life with the kids. It's like constantly reminding. Yeah. I'm trying to tell them in yeah. advance of a problem. And then something happens. I'm like, I just told you. Watch your step. Boom. Face plant. Pow. I just said, hey, man, you're getting ready to step up. Yeah, and you just ignore me. I think part of that, though, I think, <laughs> I, yeah, no, I think with the kids, though, I think they do that because, like, the part of it is they gotta. I mean, you can hear; they can probably hear you say it like a thousand times. I guess yeah. it, it doesn't click until it actually like yeah. they do face plant. Then they're like, yeah. oh, okay. And I don't, like, I'm until not they a, actually get the yeah. you know one of mine, and I tell them we don't. I don't like them having the iPads all the time, but sometimes I feel like they've got them just because. They, they've been out, they've been playing for hours. You know, hey, I want to do the iPad for a minute, so I tell them not to walk with the iPad. Right, <laughs> uh, and and without fail, one of my kids is all the time walking into shit. So he's walking <laughs> with the iPad, and will walk into a wall or walk into a corner. Or, you should record it and just make uh, a I should be like, <laughs> and just show it to him. This is all the time he walked into a door. Yeah, right? dude. I mean, like sometimes I laugh because he'll walk in and he'll grab his face and I'll be like, you know, like he because he he's literally not paying attention. I'm like, oh my yeah. god, yeah. I'm really worried about the next generation of drivers that are coming up in the next like five, ten years because there'll be, be a autonomous lot of too. fucking wrecks. Oh, I hope so. Oh, cars will be autonomous. Yeah, because it's coming, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> autonomous cars. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's coming. There's It'll, too much. There's too much. There's two. There's Snap. There's. It'll be safer. Twitter. There's Instagram. There's Facebook. What's the other one? There's uh. There's TikTok. TikTok. There's all this shit. Yeah, the drivers that are coming are going to be causing a lot of accidents. <laughs> yeah. The ones between now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So until the uh, autonomy comes out. Yeah, the the, mo- the auto automotive technology hasn't caught up to the handheld yeah. technology. Yeah, I'm excited about the uh, the automotive car. Oh, the, the automotive. Autonomous. They are the autonomous. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the to first have ever one. automotive car. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. I, I'm excited about that because, like, I you know. Driving is nice or whatever, but I, I I'm a really lazy guy, you know. I just want to be I want to be driven so I can sleep in the the passenger seat. <laughs> you can sleep in the driver's seat. Well, right I, now. I people mean, people I are could. people are doing it. <laughs> they I shouldn't. would like to just be able to do like work on things yeah. while I'm in the car because I, I'm in the car so much. This guy really is. Yeah. What do you drive like? So it's three hours and sixty thousand miles a year, probably. Probably it's three hours and forty five yeah. minutes to about four hours and five minutes a day, and that just depends. That that variance is typically. Um, factoring in time of day and traffic and things like that, because you know, can I te- can I make the trip in an hour and forty one way for sure? It's un- it's uncommon. You know, normally it's it's closer to that hour fifty five, two hours and five minutes each way. But you it's know, so so time. let's say just shy of four hours a day driving. That's weeks it, weeks of time. Yeah. yeah. Now and then, and then do that and then still put the same level if not more work in and then so instead when when you're done for the day like let's say. Uh, Last night I got done at 11.45, I think. Well, then I had to drive two hours home, which actually the drive at night at 11.45 actually runs me about an hour and 45 minutes because there's no traffic. Yeah, yeah. So, That's but, you know, time. so yeah. it's basically midnight. I've finished working, and now I've got to drive for an hour and 45 minutes. Now I'm used to it, yeah. right? The, the, I've been doing this for a long time. But at the same point, imagine from a productivity standpoint, so yeah, that's a lot of time that could be. Yeah, or, or I could be sleeping, or yeah. I could, or I could uh, uh, in the mornings. Maybe I've got, I can go ahead and get a jump on my emails and my things. Like I think from productivity standpoint, that's where I would enjoy it. I think it'll have a healthy impact on society too, um, because you won't have these real dense populations of people, mm-hmm. because people will start moving out to more rural areas, yeah. because it'll be cheaper. And if your vehicle's driving you two hours to work, you can actually get a lot done in your vehicle. It's yeah. almost like an extension of your office. So you're not losing productivity 
Yeah, you'll you'll have Wi-Fi in your vehicle. And traffic will probably be better too. There, there will be. Got to yeah, be. Yeah. Traffic won't be a problem. Yeah, should because, be. Because these cars, they all communicate with each other. They they're all aware of what's happening around them. It'll it's be kind of freaky a little bit. They're communicating with each other. It'll it's be nice. I robot <laughs> feeling. Yeah. 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 Well, Christine, you know, one of them snaps and just starts <laughs> it just like kills running. everybody. <laughs> yeah, they all just crash. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, I don't know. I, I got to tell you though, with the. <clears throat> There's a Super Cruise with the Cadillac Escalade, which I'm waiting on to, to arrive. And I think that's more my style than the Tesla. But I've got some real concerns with not hearing the car. Like, because I like the visceral experience of a vehicle and, and the, the, the motor and all these other things. And I think it's just going to take some getting acclimated to, getting used to. Because, like, I can go put you in, in a car and give you that experience. And you're going to, and you, it's almost like an adrenaline rush, right? And, when I got in the Tesla, like for a test drive, I just, it just didn't have the same feeling. It felt weird. Can you hear the car in a new Cadillac? I don't know. I, mean, I, I, mean, I mean, the. Yeah, the new one with Super Cruise, I'm not sure. I, well, that's, it's not electric, though. No, no, it's, yeah. yeah. Well, that's true, yeah. So, yeah, so it should be the like, same. But I don't think you can hear the. I don't think it's going to be what I I'm. I think those cars are so insulated, you can't really hear them anyway. I think what I'm talking about more is like, I guess it's probably a bad analogy, but like like a Lamborghini versus a Tesla. The Tesla is actually certain ones of them are actually faster. Faster. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some of them look cooler too. Yeah, some so so look. then you go I don't know if they look cool in a Lamborghini, but they, they look cool. Yeah, they look cool. <laughs> I like I was so, I'm not saying every Lamborghini. Yeah. There are some I'll say there are some uh questionable Lamborghini. Today, that's true. So, yeah, yeah. So. That's true. So uh but you know, it's just for me it's like I, I just can they get can they replace that visceral experience of it, yeah. right? Like even just hearing a car start and hearing that noise, for some reason, it triggers something I think to me. for our generation. For us, yeah. yeah. So so maybe that starts yeah. to go away. But that's one of the things I'm kind of sad to see go when it does. It's like, yeah. you know, because I enjoy driving it. I don't know that I enjoy being driven. So I thought about that, right. too. Right, like, like so like, we're, how am I going to get that visceral experience, I guess? The racetrack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, VR is only an hour away. Yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just do it in your in your mind. Basically. Oh no, no. no he said uh, VIR. It's oh. a, a really nice racetrack. That's an hour. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> VR. Like VR will help too. Yeah. VR just, too. Yeah. Oh wait, the, the Lamborghini just, commercial I sent you. Yes. Did you see that? Yeah, that was cool. So there's a Lamborghini commercial where he puts on the VR headset, and it's the sun, and they recorded it, and the sun's out, basically driving in the Lamborghini, right, and the road and the visual experience, and you see the dad, who's like trapped in home, trapped at home. It's wet and, wet and nasty and rainy outside. And he, so he's got the headset. He's sad. He takes the headset off, right? And he's kind of been immersed in this immersive experience with his son. And it had a letter and it said something like, uh, something sweet about yeah, something love you, dad, love you, dad. Our families drive even more apart or something like it was pretty cool, uh, but it was through the VR headset. So you're right. Some of that experience might come from VR, right, especially in 10 years. If it's in our head, yeah, it yeah. may be indiscernible from reality. Yeah. 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 We yeah. were just talking about, uh, the holodeck, you know, yeah, like, like the, the, that kind of technology, yeah. except, except even more incredible than that. Mm, more incredible. Yeah. How, how could that be more incredible? <laughs> I mean, if it's just like, uh, just as real as this, you mm. know. So that's a, yeah, that's uh. Then it make then that loops back into you know, are we in the Matrix? You know, is this the Matrix, man? Are we, you know? No way to know. I hope they put the taste of chicken back correctly because it's not quite there yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you got a glitch in your tongue. Yeah, man, they got to fix it. <laughs> we could be some type of software. It wouldn't be like the software we know. It'd be something much more complex. Yeah, it's called DNA. Well, DNA is a code. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm saying everything. that could be our software. Mm. Right. Yeah. Well, that's the life form, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're like meat yeah. machines, right? That's like that. We're we're vessels that's for the DNA. I agree. I think we're a sack of meat. Like they were, we're, this is a vessel that carries whatever we are. That's what you know. So you, oh, so protect, you guys, so you guys, um, you got to protect you the vessel. In the soul or whatever. Uh, soul, soul believer, soul not guys. Not a soul. soul guys. Are we just husks of meat? You know. Well, I think yeah. I think the DNA is. I think that is the life form. You think that's the that's what makes you you? We're Maybe all. We're, kinda, I yeah, think right? we're all the same thing. We're all related. I mean, every all life on Earth came from single cell organisms. Sure. It just branches out sure. and keeps evolving and and cycling and it's and growing. So I think we are life. We're all the same. Like I, I think we have a false sense of individuality. But I think we're one life form, and and maybe, you know, maybe eventually that, you know, all, all because no information is lost, so maybe eventually all that information comes together, and then we, maybe our consciousness, reemerges in the future after we die mm. as part of some greater being or what really is the life form yeah have you ever uh, read that was it that short story uh, the egg or whatever mm -hmm. yes it's awesome the egg egg. 
the throw egg. That, I, th- I throw a little bit of accent. The egg. The <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the the egg. Is that the one that I, that I watched? Yeah, it's a great story. It's a great yeah. story. Yeah. yeah, it's really good. Yeah, yeah, I really like that story. It throws you off, but it makes you think. It does make you think. Yeah. And that after, and I'm just from a third party. That after mushrooms could be crazy. You know, <laughs> oh yeah. Just really get you thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, it's uh, Kurtz Gazat. Yes, yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah. Did they write that, or I thought that was a real uh, thing? I thought they just like that's their channel. No, I know it's the channel, but I thought the story was like written. They, I thought they just made a video to accompany the story. I think they wrote it. They oh, write a lot of stuff like that. It's all science based. Because I feel like uh, even like that concept, you know, I've come across uh, yeah. before the, the idea. Well, a lot of scientists well, believe something like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, if you, not the God thing, but as yeah, far as God, yeah. well, if you think about like reincarnation, without going down too, that's some version of it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you think about it, so. It's it's interesting. Yeah, because in theory, if reincarnation is real, then it's like, yeah, we all are. Uh, we all are. Well, there's a lot whatever, of cells you know? in your body and my bo- in our our bodies that have been in many bodies. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That yeah, yeah, we're all made right. out of yeah, the yeah, same yeah, yeah, shit, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just we're just stardust that can speak. Yeah, and, and also <laughs> you just like inhale people's whatever yeah. are passing by them all the time. You know what I mean? Have you ever had that feeling like you were somebody else before? Like, have you ever had such a visceral memory? Well, that, we have instincts, that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, you and our instincts see, come I don't know from if it's a memory of other high. people in the past. <laughs> 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 I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, uh, well, I've had I've had some what felt like a memory, right, or a thing that happened, and and it, and I physically when I remembered it, when I experienced it. I physically had a reaction, like, like, like to give an example. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is weird too, but like, I, ha- I had this physical reaction to uh, uh, a child, a child drowning, and I literally, after this, told my wife, I was like, "Hey, we need to put an emergency life vest to be thrown out off our dock, just in case one of the kids was to fall in, right, and couldn't swim. The vest we usually keep in the house." Right, and there's stuff that's on the boat. But if somebody fell in an emergency, how long does it take to get on the boat or go up to the house or come down? Right. So like in my head, I was like, in this thing that happened, I went through all like the remorse of a of a of, and I don't know if it was a family child or something I was witnessing, experiencing, and and I remember thinking like, why is there not a vet? Like why is there not an emergency life? And then I came, like you know, when I kind of came out of it, I was making decisions to prevent that from happening. So like, but it felt so weird. I had a literally a physical reaction to it and then i changed things in my life based on that wow and that was out of nowhere it's like if you have a chance uh look up lex friedman's podcast on youtube and uh the episode that just came out recently with matthew johnson he's a scientist he talks about some of this stuff and yeah and um there's so much we don't understand about how consciousness works and how reality really works because it's all an illusion it's all just our interpretation of reality based on how we're evolved so, you know, a lot of the thing, like, what are ideas? Ideas are strange. They yeah. just pop in there, right? Your brain generates them. But how many ideas come from your DNA? Just come from yeah. your your instinct that's been developed yeah, from your ancestors. Yeah, because like our fears, like fear of snakes and yeah, spiders. That's just like a, that's like a fear that's just been ingrained in your um, right. Yeah, it's in it's, your DNA or whatever. It's encoded in in you, yeah, in us. Yeah, yeah. I do. I do think like uh, some of our experiences, you know, uh, however, like traumatic or whatever, or even positive, you know, they kind of like write something in your DNA. You know, something. Yeah. Um, well, he, uh, he that's talks. based off zero science. You know, I'll say I'm but, not. I'm not a scientist. I'm not. Yeah. You know, a doctor. Uh-huh. I, I'm just a curious human, and yeah. I and I read a lot of science and follow a lot of doctors Yeah, no, I think it's good to, like, you know, so. just uh, openly ponder stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's important to know that nobody knows the answer yeah. to yeah. these things. Not even the scientists. They, they have no idea. They just have intuitions like we do. And yeah. Let's not they, but they've sure. done a lot of research to figure it out. Yeah. But it seems like the more they figure out, the less they know. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you, you yeah. get an answer and you get two more questions. Yeah. And, yeah. But uh, he, Yeah, he because has, the answer creates, well, yeah. if that's true, then this can't be so. Yeah. yeah. And you say what? Uh, he 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 talks about how um, how he, he he said you know talking about molecules and you know he he studies psychedelics and it's like how these molecules are like keys to different perceptions, different uh, um, they unlock. Uh, different perceptions of your mind or different parts of your consciousness and different 
conscious experiences. And he, he, he actually mentioned in that podcast, and this is a brilliant scientist, uh, that he intuitively believes that there's some type of panpsychism that's happening that, you know, maybe in those, when you, when now you're... Play, hold up. Uh, you got to explain panpsychism oh, to that's, me that's, real quick. That's sort of the idea that uh, everything is connected and all part of uh, one consciousness. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, so... I got gotcha. you. Um, that that table is not conscious, but it's part of the collective consciousness yeah. of, of reality, of the universe. Okay. And maybe the universe is part of some life form or is a life form. Um, there's no way to prove or disprove that right now, but... Um, but you know, even just on a on a, a life basis, just things that are we consider living conscious beings, um, these molecules when we put these in our body and our mind, they open us up to different experiences, different uh, types of conscious experience. Um, and he, and what he was saying is that we really don't know that uh, we're not somehow accessing other dimensions of reality, and, and 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 we may not know for a long time. But yeah. Or ever. Or ever. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's fascinating though. It's, yeah. It's really intriguing. So. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I agree. I agree, man. I agree. I agree. I, it's sense. not much to add to that. But I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? So anyway, so anyway, look up uh, look up that. You know. Yeah, no, I'll check that because I, you know, I I do like um. I do like learning all about like that yeah, conscious, so. you know, what is consciousness? Are we real? I don't know. And so for the audience, so you don't think I'm insane, that this, these are mainstream scientific ideas. Uh, look at Lex Friedman's podcast, Matthew Johnson. It's a really good one. Um, Shouts out. And, uh, and don't go to the Pope's podcast. I, I got a feeling you're going to get a different, a different vibe from them. Probably just be really boring. Yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> very very <Dissed>. boring and, <laughs> and uh, very ideological. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are not you. Know, you wouldn't describe yourself ideological. I, I no. ideal. Try to be a, try to ideal. stay objective on stuff. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, I feel like it's, uh, you it's know, I've got family members that are pastors, and you don't want to. Yeah. You don't want to. Uh, it's weird. It's like I'm open to things, and I'm not. I'm and I don't know, so I'm not going to tell anybody that they're wrong, right? Yeah. So, so it's see, just religion, be, be respectful. You don't need religion to be an ideology. I feel like you can have like. Um, yeah. Oh, you can have. Lots yeah, of you can make ideologies. anything really an ideology. I mean, yeah. I have I have ideologies like my like an ideology that I have is that people should be free. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah that's I like a good that. One. I respect that's a good one. other people. Uh, you know, you shouldn't hurt people for no reason. I agree. Yeah. You know, I, I have ideologies, but they're. I like that he They're says all based not, you on, shouldn't hurt people, but you shouldn't hurt people for no reason. Right, yeah. Sometimes you have to hurt people because exactly. they won't hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, no, it's yeah, unfortunate. Yeah. I don't yeah. like that either. Yeah. I think we'll eventually resolve that too. I think there's people yeah. people in society that are damaged and, and that also maybe maybe they're just malfunctioning, like their genes are messed up. Yeah, they're going back to the computer thing, they got a, they got like a glitchy yeah, brain they're just a virus. Or, whatever, or like a cancer. Yeah. They're like a cancer on, in society and, and we'll find a cure for that cancer eventually. Yep. We'll, we'll find out like what makes it. It sounds so ominous. We'll path. find a cure for that. We'll find a cure. The, the cancer of our society. We'll yes. find well, a cure for that. I've got 17 <laughs> rounds of the cure in my, uh, my waist right here. <laughs> I mean, the, the, <laughs> the ominous part of it is, is a sociopath. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Want, someone that enjoys hurting people. Yeah. Well, they would, a sociopath would say, well, not enjoy it, but actually they, everybody else is wrong. They're right. Right. Yeah. You should be like me. That's and true. That. And it, you can't really argue. I mean, you can argue against it, but you can't really yeah, prove yeah. it one way or another. So that's mm-hmm. ends up being a problem sometimes if you have really good sociopaths who can really do damage. Yeah. <laughs> that's well, true. I think the, uh, the key is they're destroying the body of the yeah. organism, you know, so right. I, I, just like a cancer would, you know, cancer, a cancer cell is, uh, a cell doesn't become a. It doesn't start as a cancer cell. It becomes one, right? It becomes infected. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like a, yeah, like it a mutated re- cell. It right? mutates. Yeah. So maybe that's what happens with socio sociopaths. They they maybe their genes mutate and they they. St- you think they're spreading and stuff like that? Well, not, I mean, not, my, maybe not that. I mean, it's or whatever. You know, it's just it's just those genes are they went bad. There's, a, mm, there's, yeah, there's yeah, some yeah. something in their genes that caused that behavior. We just don't know what it is yet. But once we know what it is, we can use technology like CRISPR to. Re- reverse that gene or correct it 
See, yeah. I don't think we can. I don't think we're gonna. I think that's just always gonna be there. I think it's too far gone. I think. I don't y- think so, man. I think like the idea of eliminating assholes, basically. <laughs> 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 well, <that's, laughs> we, we kind of we do that through natural selection now. I don't know. Assholes are out here. They're they, getting theirs. They are, but, yeah. but assholes today aren't like they were 100 years ago or 200 years ago when they would actually kill you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, I got I to yeah. admit here, um, to the happiness of my wife and some family, I can be an asshole. I don't think I am an asshole. I think I'm actually really I think like, we're all assholes. I think we can definitely. Yeah, but I kind of. Yeah, yeah sure. when I'm sick, like he was talking about sick and he, his wife gets irritated, like I can definitely be an asshole when I'm sick. Sure. Like when I'm irritable. Like, but sometimes I like being an asshole to, you know. In a joking way, like oh yeah, but you yeah, yeah. consider too, like yeah, yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, we all. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I don't think that makes us assholes. Yeah, it's, it's just, a, just a joke. It's yeah, just it's a joke. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, like fifty or sixty years ago, it was fairly acceptable. It was accepted by society for men to hit women, like that was just yeah. normal. Like yeah. for a man to hit his wife, that's insane. Like this, and and those types of traits become eliminated because as the majority of people start to frown on that and say, that's not right. You think it's a trade thing? I think it's just like know. a society thing. I'll tell you. It's both. No, because like yeah, what he just it's, said it's, rings true. It's an true. evolution of, of, of society. He's saying, what he's saying is true is it was, it was accepted. And, and you know, you know, the rule of thumb is right. That you could beat your wife with a stick, but it couldn't be any, any larger than your thumb. You never heard that? No, I never yeah, heard that's, that. That's I thought North they were Carolina just like, law. Uh, open no. handing it. No, no yeah. Well, yeah. North same Carolina thing. law. North Carolina law. Oh, oh, uh, that's yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that doesn't there's, surprise me. There's a me, lot of actually. laws like that from the turn of the century. Well, yeah, the the there's some. Uh, I think is it in South Carolina? There's one that you can beat your wife on the courthouse steps on Sunday dude. between, like, um, like. Uh, there's a bunch of those. Eleven and one yeah. o'clock. Like, dude, the there's some weird the guy with the big thumbs. Oh, yeah, gosh, man. I'm <laughs> telling you. So upset. She thought she wanted a man, man. <laughs> yeah. But um, but the way that 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 society has changed, where that's no longer acceptable, that's the same way I feel about, and this is yeah. controversial, but about spanking your kids, because what's happened mm. is, it's not spanking. That what ends up happening is a parent gets pissed, and out of anger, they're hitting their children yeah. to yeah. deter behavior, right? Yeah. yeah. And so I feel like what you're teaching a child is, when somebody does something I don't like, I can hit them to make them stop doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So right. like I, I don't, we've never spanked. Part of that. Uh, and that's just one of the you know many. Uh, yeah. An downsides. easier way to see that evolution though is like with dogs. Yeah. So, so you know you'd have like a really friendly dog, uh, like a cocker spaniel. Sure. Well, that 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 cocker spaniel was at one. Its ancestors were wolves. Yeah. You know, so that that the aggression has been bred out of the dog. So you can, you know, society is sort of we we. Uh, monitor ourselves right so we we uh collectively decide what's acceptable behavior what's not acceptable the acceptable behavior gets carried on the unacceptable behavior nobody wants to mate with that person because they're they're violent or they're too aggressive or they're they're harming society sure so we it's natural selection you know those guys are really manipulative though and they do look for people who uh, fall victim to that stuff like that like because that's like uh you know, people who manipulate stuff like that, they usually go for people who are very um, insecure, who have very low self-esteem, oh, yeah, yeah, very sure. easy to manipulate, yeah. yeah, very easy to pressure, and they have someone right there to. But the worst do of them usually end up in prison. Whatever. Yeah. So do y'all remember the one that had uh, Sylvester Stallone, and I think it was like Judge Dredd or something, where he he supposedly committed a crime they thawed him out and he, he woke up in the future and there yeah, was no yeah. criminals that's uh so there was no evil people right except for the other evil person that had thawed out demolition man demolition, demolition man, man. That's, that's it, that's it. Yeah. that was it my bad demolition man so that's what I, that was what makes me think about this i think eventually in the future <laughs> there's going to be a lot less crime and then but yeah. but then you're going to have these holdouts and maybe they didn't come from the hit from past well, but yeah a lot of a lot of uh genetic scientists and even um People like, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, I can't think of his name. Uh, drawing a blank here. Uh, what's, what's the neuroscientist's name? Uh, uh, it starts with the, the, guy, the guy you talked about last time. It starts with a P? No, no. Oh. Um, well, I can't think of his name. Anyway, I'll get back to it. I don't remember his name, but uh, a lot of geneticists and, and scientists actually believe that uh, that we will, in the next, probably within the next decade or so, we'll, I mean, they're already doing it. They're already modifying embryos now, but yeah. they'll start 
genetically modifying embryos to make sure that they're free of disease and sickness. Like they'll they'll just cut all that out of the they'll, they'll correct all the, the the genes that would cause cancers and and other types of underlying health disorders or predispositions for those health disorders. Mm -hmm. And and also they'll eventually figure out what genes cause people to be psychopaths and stuff like that. And they can just correct that gene so that person will never be a sociopath. And and I, and and most a lot of a lot of these genetic scientists and even philosophers and and, and people in the scientific community believe that over the, like eventually probably within the next couple decades most people will stop uh, having traditional style pregnancies too they'll all embryos will be genetically modified to make them a little smarter healthier you know just just a uh, It'll it'll be so, a, 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 a more advanced civilization. So sex is done. Sex is out the well, door. Well, sex will be for fun. <laughs> Past sex. It's everybody. for fun now, man. That's the best part. So, no, no. Don't you like that kind of risk? Yeah. It? There's a little bit of risk, you know. Yeah. It, there might be a chance she's pregnant. You know, that's. So, so it's a little. It's a little like that's rolling the of, dice. It's a little bit of, of a gamble. <laughs> sex is fun. Insemination is done. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, uh, you ever see that um, that Woody Allen movie, um, Sleeper? Sleeper, yes. Yeah. I was about yes, yeah, Sleeper. Uh, uh, there's a joke in there's like a bit in the movie um, where he, like he he's like he owns like a grocery store or something like that, like a vegetarian grocery. That's Woody Allen's character, and he gets like frozen. He wakes up like in the future, oh. and in the future, like. Um, they have like robot servants. Uh, they got the orgasmatron. The orgasm. That was the point. Yeah, the <laughs> orgasmatron. They don't even have like sex. Any like they have like a machine that. That's what they were called. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm gonna have to go back and watch this. How old is this? <laughs> like ooh, 60s, late yeah, 60s. Yeah, yeah. I want to say 67 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm gonna have sure. to go back and watch. It's called well, you know, uh, that'll definitely sleeper. be a thing. Sleeper, yeah. Mm -hmm. Soon. Oh yeah, that's already yeah, a yeah. thing now, right? Yeah, I mean we already got like they sex have sex dolls robots, right? Yeah, we have sex dolls. Yeah, so that'll, that'll be a thing for sure. Yeah, that's like he's like one step away from the movie. Her, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. kind of is right. Yeah, you, if you is, have the yeah. phone and then you got the the doll, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. But I mean, I, I think that stuff is is good in a lot of ways. Because, really? Well, I mean, you have certain people in society that maybe don't mingle well or have trouble yeah that's the thing it's a put, it, it gives them inspiration to try and be better to try right. and get better at mingling or at yeah, least why at least, get better at mingling if you got a robot on your couch well also we all have biological needs i mean it's not fair yeah for those people to not be able to fulfill those needs well i mean i feel like that's like the driving force right you know that's like yeah. well, everything's uh, sexual selection right yeah, I mean, really, if you want to, yeah. uh, like, that's what it all comes down to. I the mean, Lamborghini is just the peacock feathers. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's really. <laughs> oh, my God, everybody in the future is going to have robot boyfriend and girlfriends. We're done. I yeah. Think that's no, just gonna well, be we're going to be robots. Be. Well, oh, Jesus. Yeah. No, but, like, there's no, there's going to be like a human are, are aspect to it, you know? <laughs> yeah, this goes back Neil, to, was it Reed or was it, uh, what's his name, talking me. about <laughs> sli that he was fucking the headset, the VR headset? <laughs> Who was that last week? Uh <laughs> Uh, was it Reed that did it, or was it? Uh, I think it was Reed. Yeah. yeah, Reed talked about uh, talked about. It's not working. His VR experience and it wasn't working. <laughs> he was all up into chips and. <laughs> See, I've done the I've done the the uh, VR porn too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, cause I, I was gifted. Like, actually, it was so funny. Dusty actually gave me a VR headset. <laughs> Dusty yeah. actually gifted yeah. me a um a uh, a VR headset. So, so they got it back together then, huh? Well, he didn't teach yeah. Reed. Oh, he didn't. No, teach he, didn't, me. he didn't teach me how to use. He just gave me like it's not even. It wasn't even a VR headset. It's just like uh, it's just well, it's the headset you put your put phone, your phone in. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was it. So um, I had it, and then I have like uh, I was also gifted um, a <laughs> flashlight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is like this is like Christmas last year actually. So this oh. is about a year ago. Wow. So uh, anyway, this is the crude orgasmatron. This is the crude <laughs> orgasmatron. <laughs> so I was like, uh, yeah, let me put these together. It was like the ultimate storm. You know what I mean? I had the flashlight. I got the VR headset. <laughs> put them together. You know, that sounds like and a good time. And you just get a lot of shame. Yeah. No, yeah. for real. Though. It was. I spent. I spent more time than I want to admit trying to figure this out. So 
I'm just uh, like, because I remember I lit, I, I went all out. I lit candles. I got the lotion. <laughs> out. My roommate was gone. You had that was, real experience. I was. It was a date. It, I was <laughs> taking myself on a date. I got. I, t- I went to the shower first. You know, I was ready. <laughs> <laughs> did you and, do a little trim up and get it, get it out <laughs> yeah, in? Yeah. Shaving the beard, shaving both bushes. You know, I'm doing, I'm doing it all. And then. Uh, and then I try to like pull up the thing on because I remember uh, like because they have like a VR section on the sites or whatever. Right? So I'm like, um, so I'm like trying to get on the um, on the on the site trying to like set it up, but it's so weird because it's like every time I do it, it's like I, I, I always find the edge. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm always everywhere. I somehow always end up on the edge of the video where it's just like black. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like. It's almost like one of those TV screens that kind of like it doesn't go all the way around you. It's just like it stops here. So your brain's stops. not buying it. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then it, it just felt weird, and uh, and then I was doing it. I just uh, I couldn't really immerse myself too because the penis didn't look r- like mine either. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's a black guy. I'm like, that is this just isn't realistic to me. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. What's going to happen is just like they did the glove. They're just going to have you like, you'll have to do like, uh, maybe you have to stand in front of pictures and get like a full body scans and your avatar becomes Ooh, more lifelike. An avatar It's dick. rapidly advancing. So yeah. Or you can customize yeah. your dick, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do yes. different styles of foreskin, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, when it, when it reaches a level where it's indiscernible from reality, you'll be that person. Mm-hmm. It'll yeah. really be you. Oh man, <laughs> that sounds so scary. Every time it keeps coming up, it sounds worse. And worse. It's gonna be. Scary. <laughs> It'll be scary if you forget how to get out. Yeah, <laughs> that's. But well, see, who's gonna want to go out? You know. Yeah. How do you disconnect? Well, you yeah. just come out to eat, right? Maybe. Mm, yeah. Or, or you just, just like have a hologram. Have a roast feeding or whatever, tube. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For real though, like a little. Uh, they have like a catheter, and you, you don't even have to leave. When you come, you come out, room. and you see how terrible your body really is. You just die. <laughs> yeah, you know what that would do. You just like, damn, that's what I look like. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh man. And then you just go back to. Or maybe you know I th- what I think will probably be. World. It could be an early iteration of that type of of technologies. You you, like I said earlier, you come out every couple hours, but those two hours might have been like hundreds of years. Mm. Oh yeah, especially if, yeah if you got like if you're living for so long. Or yeah, and you're, you're so living. intelligent. So you just come out and then you go work out and you. Do stuff mm, in the real very world. Very interesting because well, I've had a long-standing theory that uh, I am God. So. Hey, that's well, funny. I, I've thought that too. I think isn't the same yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. A, yeah, everyone's kind of like the. I'm God just trying to figure out why I can't control my bladder. Well, if, if, if every, <laughs> you're like the worst God. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I gotta pee again, fellas. Like it's like, uh, well, you know, if, 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 if all life is connected and it's all one life form, I mean, yeah. technically. You are, yeah. You are God. Yeah. We're all God. We're really. all God. We're yeah. all a part of God. Uh, yeah, and it's also, you know, you should treat others. It's that corny ass shit again. Yeah. You should treat others it's better because you are, you are, you are, you are, I'm you, you're me. Yeah, so we're I the should same. treat you with respect because, yeah, you know, right. you're disrespecting yourself. If uh, you, I agree with we're that. We're the same organism. Sure. I, I mean, even beyond that, I mean. I'm not going to lie to you. I hugged a tree recently. It's probably been a few months. But I spoke to a tree. That's very Did you? Yeah, yeah. I, I may have. I may have spoke to the tree. But I hugged a tree. I smell weed, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> maybe we're getting a secondhand high. I don't, man. They're pumping I'm it hug, in. I'm hugging a tree. You know, uh, <laughs> Dusty, and Reed, Dusty and Reed did say the last time that they had been hiding out camping in the building, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's very possible that's what we're I getting. But, uh, you know, they're in the, the ducks or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> But uh, I remember the, the, the whole experience, like, with the tree and, and that whole tree huggerish feeling. And some of the people, and I'm like, you know what? This would be good for everybody to experience. You know, yeah. like, well, that's not far fetched. You know, they say there's all kinds of studies or whatever. Plants actually benefit uh, from you know speaking to them and talking to them. Even music. Uh, you know, that's another interesting thing with the music. Yeah, like, I've read some of this stuff too. Y- yeah. Even I, I've seen like you know just like videos or whatever, and even just like in like, you know dogs I've had and stuff like that, like responding. Uh, positively to music like they're actually like you know they're listening like, there's yeah. no way they aren't like comprehending like you know maybe it doesn't necessarily sound exactly how we hear but it is they are interpreting music or whatever which is, I think is interesting because like music is, and I think a lot of art in general you're well, talking plants, about plants pl- yeah yeah plants communicate say. through chemical yes yeah chemicals so they, they, they are, release distress calls and I everything yeah I don't think they're conscious like we are I don't know if there's anything that it's like to be a plant I've heard plants uh, can 
scream though or yell, which yeah, would suck it, if you're walking outside. Can you imagine you could hear that like thousands <laughs> of screams as you're walking? Yeah, there's, I would go back inside. <laughs> there's a short story like Don't that. tell all the vegans about this. <laughs> no, They're going to be pissed. It's so funny. I can't remember the name, but there's a short story exactly like that. I think this guy, like he invents a machine or something like that. And, uh, and he's able to hear, like, what the plants are saying or whatever. And they're, like, constantly screaming or something. Well, I've like, seen a guy that uh, he created some kind of technology that will play music from the plants. Like, as they, uh, as, as they have chemical reactions, it'll make sounds hmm. or something. But, huh. Uh, I'm probably destroying that, but it was, it was something like that. Well, no, I, I butchered my thing. Too. Well, <laughs> that was probably way off. I tried the TV one time for, for our dog. When I left, uh, and I swear, I, I don't know that there's any reaction. Like, sometimes I'll have another dog on my iPhone because he's being a little shit, and I'll be like, this is the dog I should have gotten, and I'm going to get him. And I'll show him, like, a little <laughs> video of the dog. Your self-esteem. Yeah, I'll, I'll show him, like, another video of a dog that like, kept being a good dog. And be like, yeah, this is the dog I'm going to get. And he's just like, he is not paying any attention. Like That's funny. He hears the bark, like he looks, but then he it's like he doesn't see the screen. I don't yeah. know what's up, but. I play dog. My I threats aren't dog working. Bugs. For my dog. You said you what? I play dog, like dog, like clips, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, like just sounds yeah. just to fuck with him. He falls yeah. for it at first, but then it's just like. He uh, started, yeah. Well, yeah. sometimes I tell him, you know, a threat that does work, I tell him I'm sending him to my mother in law. Oh, he, he gets that. Yeah, he gets that one. He gets scared. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. He, he, he knows there's some real. <laughs> it's an evil place. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for that one, too. Yeah. <laughs> Well, dude, it's been a pleasure having you on, man. Oh, awesome. yeah, 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 man. Thanks for having me. You know, this is fun. Do you, uh, do you have anything coming up you want to plug or any, any of your social um, media stuff? Shows. I mean, you can follow me, um, Davro Dex. That's D-A-V-I-R-O-D-E-X on Instagram. Uh, it's, I, I, I'm never on Twitter. Um, you, but shows, I don't really have any shows. I had. I actually did have some, but the curfew canceled them. Oh, um, okay, so. yeah. Uh, you know, playing it by year. I should be uh, out in Charlotte though, uh, like in January. But um, cool. Anything else? Uh, yeah, no. Well, you're a funny dude, man. Everybody, uh, go, go check him out. And if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you next week. Later. See you guys. Thank you. Bye.